Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How is everybody? I see all the smiley faces out there all across the United States and Canada and Europe and Asia and Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines. Uh, I think we have a couple people even in Antarctica from what I saw in analytics. <laughs> Good to have you with us. Welcome. You are in store for another amazing Wonderful episode of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series where we are bringing back the lost art of conversation, sort of blending the old school style of doing talk shows. I do this uh, type of work and much more in television, radio, multimedia as a television and radio personality, presenter and host, a journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist and more. And uh, we created this uh, almost a year ago now with over 300 episodes live seven days a week brought in the television cameras uh, and uh, lighting and uh, built the home studio here in the greater New York area between New York and Boston along the southern New England coast. And we welcome you from wherever you're watching. This is an Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series where we are bringing back the lost art of conversation, warm and welcoming with lots of fun, levity, inspiration, guests from television and film, Broadway, Hollywood, science, health and wellness, culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, international guests and artists as well and so much more and every show is something different something unique with a different theme topic and scenario and everybody's welcome doesn't matter your gender your income your height weight eye color zip code political leanings religious leanings if any none of it everybody's welcome on the gym master show live entertainment lifestyle talk show series so we welcome you we take that old school style of talk show we blend it with the modern twist and modern vibe of today. We take those two worlds and we go, whoosh, and out comes the Gym Master Show Live, which is about uh, positivity, inspiration, light, love, and levity, and our famous levity. Now, you may see levity all over, and you're like, what is this levity thing he's talking about? Well, because in the summertime, he said love and levity just a little too fast. And when I said that, it became levity, and all of the viewers who were our wonderful, faithful, loyal viewers became our Loverties. They're part of our Lovity squad. If you're watching right now, you are now a Lovity on the Gym Masters Show Live, and it's a pretty cool thing to be. Um, not just a viewer or a listener, you're a Lovity. Really cool. Our guests become Loverties. The viewers called the Loverties, call me Mr. Lovity. They call this Lovity Hall or Lovityville. <laughs> And uh, it's really, really cool. We toast you in style, of course, a high class production here. We don't treat this really like a stream or a podcast. We actually produce this show like it's a television show. So, welcome to our online television show, The Gym Master Show Live. We toast all of you in style. Get your glasses ready. Chin chin. And we thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Uh, we have a wonderful guest, DJ Bucciarelli is here. Uh, he hails originally from Boston, from Beantown. Yes, Cape Cod and Boston clam chowder and so much more. But he makes his home in New York where some of that additional action is. And he's an incredible actor and singer. He's a terrific person. Uh, and boy, he's got a great career going. And we're going to talk with him in just a second and welcome him to our show. He's all excited to be here. I'm all excited to have him. You guys are excited that he's here. And we will check in with some of our faithful, lovely viewers around the world. Willie's watching in Holland and she goes, Tulip City. Thank you. Tulip's coming from Holland. You can't beat that. I got to get back to the Netherlands. We were on a TV shoot there about a year ago. And then we were there two years before for two different television shows. And it was great. I got to get back there. Enjoyed my time in Holland. Good to see you, Willie, in St. Augustine, Florida. Good evening, Mr. Levity. Good evening, Lovities. And that is uh, in St. Augustine, Florida, the wonderful Linda Odell. Good to see you, Linda. Hope you're doing well. Mary Bishop is here, and she's also in sunny Florida, Pine Island, Florida to be exact. Hello, Jim and all lovely friends. Good to see you as well. Mary, Maureen. Hello, everybody. Time for lovely roll call. You got it. Maureen is watching from Arizona. We love to have you here, Maureen, when you're tuned in. Crystal is watching from Connecticut, from Southern New England. Hi, Jim and everyone. Happy Thursday. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Looking forward to an amazing show with great entertainment, inspiring conversation, and lovity. You got it, Crystal. Always great when we have lovity, right? So many comments coming in here. Thanks, everybody. Uh, this is a very viewer interactive show. 
So we encourage viewers to, to comment and celebrate and enjoy themselves. They also talk amongst themselves too, which is kind of cool. We are a very viewer interactive uh, show with viewers from all around the world. Now you don't have to post a comment in order to watch and enjoy. If you're watching right now on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV, we invite and welcome you to subscribe to the channel. We would love that so we can keep delivering all this incredible content to you. Not only the Gym Master Show Live, but we also have the inspirational uh, visual and verbal inspiring uh, video content of those quick videos I do called Master's Mantras. For years I've done um, Master's Mantras commentary on my Facebook pages and people have loved that. So we turned it into a video series that's on the YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. So check it out uh, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. From Cleveland, Ohio, one of our other faithful loveties. Hello, Jim and our loveity family. So happy to see everyone tonight. Good to see you, Kathy Short in Cleveland. I was in Cleveland about a year and a half ago on a TV shoot there and fell in love with good old Cleveland. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and good food and even the house where they filmed the outdoor scenes for A Christmas Story. Remember we had Scott Schwartz on, the actor who was one of the kids in Christmas Story. That was a lot of fun. Hi, Crystal and Maureen and Mary and Linda and Willie. That's from Merlin. See, they all say hello to each other. <laughs> good to see you, Merlin, who is uh, reporting for duty uh, from wonderful Canada, our neighbors to the north. And uh, she's here and hopefully her internet is working tonight. She has sometimes in Intercap Ontario, some uh, internet uh, craziness that happens. Hi, Jim and Lovities from Ann Wozniak in the Jacksonville, Florida area. From Mona is here from Louisiana, USA. Hello, Jim and Lovity friends. Good to see you as well, Mona, one of our faithful from South Africa. Juanita's always here every night. Hello, Jim and Lovety Squad. Hope everyone is doing well. Thank you, Juanita and South Africa. I hope you're having a beautiful day as well. And you like sunsets like I do. I saw in the comments and uh, appreciate that. I love those photos as well. And we always post them as often as we can. So good to see everybody and welcome. Uh, nice to see all these comments coming in. We'll go through more of them in, uh, in just a second. First, we're going to welcome DJ to the show. Hey, Jim. Hope you had a good day. Hi, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Kathleen Walker in New York City. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Uh, Linda chiming in. Uh, love your shirt and hat. Looking handsome tonight, Mr. Loverty. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Linda. Renee in Iowa is here. Hope there's no tornadoes tonight. You had that tornado watch in Iowa. I hope things are calmer for you, Renee. Crystal says, I love your shirt. You know, it's actually a sweater. It's actually a light sweater. It's kind of cool. Um, it's, it's warm, but not hot. It's just enough, a very thin sweater. Thanks for the uh, compliments, gang. I love it. Uh, love the sweater, Jim. Another one. Pink also looks uh, neon on screen, does it really? I'm, I'm all lit up, huh? June Rachelson Aspa, our dear friend. Hi, all. June reporting from New York as well. Good to see you. Uh, Tracy Coletti Flynn is here. Hey, Tracy, welcome. Hi, everyone. Looking forward to learning more about DJ. Absolutely. Welcome to the show. Love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Big time. And everybody's saying hello to Tracy. It's a very welcoming uh, group we have here. Rosemary Coletti here too. And uh, happy to be part of Lovely Squad. Rosemary Coletti. There was actually, wasn't there somebody on Channel 2 in New York with that name, Coletti? Roseanne Coletti, yeah, Channel 2 News, consumer reporter. Uh, Mona says, yes, love the hat and the shirt. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I think I'll wear this every night for the next week. <laughs> Welcome, DJ, and hi, Jim, and all the rest. And good evening, DJ. You're now a Lovity. Yep, I told him all about Lovity Hall, so he's very familiar with it. And he just says, bring it on. He's very happy to be uh, considered one of our faithful loveties. And we're so happy to have him here on the show. Again, he hails, as I mentioned, uh, from Boston. And he is here with us tonight, an actor, toured nationally with Jesus Christ Superstar, starring Ted Neely internationally with Saturday Night Fever regionally at such theaters as the Algonquin Playhouse. I love Algonquin. Riverside Theater, Kate Playhouse, most recently he starred opposite Kathleen Turner and the new musical, Bollywood and Vine. As a producer, DJ created Carol King's, the world's first all-male Carol King tribute that has traveled the world for the past five years. Previous venues have included Caesars Palace, Niagara Falls, Celebrity Norwegian, Princess Cruises, dozens of regional theaters and performing arts centers. Additionally, DJ is the CEO of 2A Productions and Design Lab, 
which specializes in producing, consulting, and graphic design for artists and small businesses looking to better brand themselves. And most recently, his company has expanded into virtual entertainment sphere, producing online events that range from uh, bingo to live music, everything in between. You can catch him every other Tuesday doing the Name That Tune, the Queensboro Performing Arts Center as well. I think that's really, really cool. We're so honored to have him here. He's a uh, fan of our show, which I think is awesome. We love when the guests are fans of our show. Let's welcome him live and direct from New York City. DJ, there you are and welcome, my friend. I mean, what a nice introduction. Thank you so much. I'm already a lovely and I haven't done anything yet and I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I make sure I made sure I ran it through your mom and she gave it thumbs up. <laughs> oh. She's biased. Don't listen to That's her. What, <laughs> well, I told you that, you know, um, and I say it to all the guests, there's Emmys and Tonys and Oscars and Tellys and Peabody's and Grammys and all these wonderful awards that we all in these industries we're in work towards. And, you know, there's sort of the icing on the cake. It's not why we do what we do, but it's sort of the icing. But when yeah. you come on the Gym Master Show live and you're designated already within three seconds of the show starting a lovity, doesn't it make your feet tingle? Oh, it just makes me feel like warm, like I'm laying in the sun, you know, like, you know, the, it, and today in New York City, for those of us who are in the New England, New York City area, it was 68 degrees. Yeah. It was I amazing. I was, yeah. I was in a t-shirt. Yeah. 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 I even see a little tan on you. Oh. <laughs> you went outside. <laughs> yeah. First yeah. Time really since March, right? <laughs> oh my God. It was amazing. Well, I've been running, you know, every day, but usually I wear like three sweatshirts and a hat and a mask and, you know, try to stay, yeah. stay away from human beings. Yeah. <laughs> Which in this business sounds crazy, doesn't it? Because we're people oriented and we love being around people and entertaining oh, and performing yeah. and celebrating life and people, but having to stay away. But we're getting closer and closer to hopefully not having to do that. So yes, fingers, toes crossed. Want to uh, yeah. show you some of the cool levity that's coming in here. Uh, Renee in Iowa says, welcome, DJ. Thank and she you. And she reports, there's no tornadoes in Iowa tonight. Good. <laughs> Good evening, DJ. You're a levity now. See, Linda said you're a levity. She's in Florida. Does this come with a keychain? Yeah, you know, we're working on keychains and they want, the, swag. They want swag. They want lovely swag. So we, we have a designer that's working on some of that. We got to get that out there. They want shirts and mugs and everything. And yeah. somebody, else, somebody else that's that has been asking for it as well. Oh, that's Juanita. Welcome to the show, DJ. She's in South Africa where it's already tomorrow. It's late at night for her and uh, or early morning tomorrow. And she's always here. She's a real faithful lovely. But somebody else that wants some swag is our... Uh, Dear friend George Burns. Oh, <laughs> where's this? Where's a cigar? Right there. See? It? Oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> he's sort of my Ed McMahon. He's sort of like my uh, cohort. Uh, so he's always here, and he's he greets you. And we also have uh, back there by the television monitor is Gilligan oh. Silver, who we got on a TV shoot in uh, Switzerland. That's Jimmy the Clown. That's the I Dream a Genie bottle. And then we actually have a monster panda over on the other side named Lin Lin, who appears usually on Saturday nights, but they all welcome you. And Mary Bishop in Florida welcomes you, DJ. And Crystal in Connecticut welcomes you. Welcome to Lovety Hall. Uh, Rosemary Coletti says, hello, DJ, with claps. Kathleen Walker in New York, welcome, DJ. Uh, <laughs> it's like a red carpet, Lovety welcome, isn't it? I Crazy. haven't done anything to it to receive all of this love. I'm just sitting <laughs> here just basking in it. That's it. That's it. That's what we're all about. Tracy Coletti Flynn. Um, hi, DJ and Maureen in Arizona. Welcome, DJ. We're so happy you're here with us tonight. Really looking forward to some entertaining mm -hmm. fun. And uh, there's that DJ smile. Love it from Rosemary Aww. Coletti. <laughs> love that. And uh, Kathy Short says, hello, DJ. Welcome to the land of lovity. Uh, tulips uh, for DJ from Willie in Holland and uh, DJ from our friend June, DJ XOXOXOXOXO. Cool stuff, cool stuff. So how are you? How have you been? How have you been getting through, you know, the craziness of everything we've gone through and how have you stayed creative, connected and seen through it all, DJ? All of that is debatable. 100%. It might not all be happening. <laughs> 
depends on the hour, you know, you know, you know, at the very beginning, I'd love to say that, you know, we're all pivoting in all the ways we can and trying to be patient for all the ways that we cannot. So, you know, some days uh, I wake up and I'm super creative and I feel like I can pivot in a thousand different ways. And some days I just want to watch WandaVision. Anybody out there watching WandaVision? WandaVision and uh, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been watching a lot of reruns of TV shows, past classic TV shows and mm. movies and just all kinds of stuff. Uh, we even watched reruns of Another World, the soap opera. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. They're all on YouTube. Everybody puts everything on YouTube now. <laughs> Isn't it great? You know, uh, in, in the before times when we would do like lots of concerts with my Carol King show, which you very beautifully referenced, um, I would always show, um, and it's the silliest thing, it's the simplest thing. And actually Rosemary who's here and Tracy's who's here, they've definitely seen this sh my show a bazillion times. Um, I would always show like vintage clips of ca either Carol King performing this music or, or, you know, whoever made it famous, like little Eva and the locomotion and whatnot. And it was always so nice just to see the original old school clips. Like they're great yeah. and the dancing isn't great. The singing is always meh. We don't know. Like, but just seeing this old music is so nostalgic and cozy feeling that that's, I love YouTube. I love it. And I think I always forget that it's such a, you know, an amazing resource, especially yeah. if you're having one of those days where you're having like a mental, you know, anxiety attack, just go down a YouTube rabbit hole of watching like Dick Van Dyke. Yes. Promise. That's what we're watching is Dick Van Dyke and all of those classic shows that yeah. make you feel just really, really good, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. absolutely, Lucy, I mean, all of them, absolutely. Uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Mary Tyler Moore. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> they even have the Paul Lind show on Antenna TV late at night on Saturdays. I didn't even know he had a series, but I didn't know either. Very funny. He's hysterical. I had another guest. We were talking about it. Um, who watches George Burns and Gracie Alley reruns on Antenna TV. And uh, I said, have you caught the Paul Lind show? And he's like, oh, I didn't even know he had a series. I think what happened was Bewitched was coming to an end. Elizabeth Montgomery didn't want to do it anymore. So they had like another year or two years left with ABC. So they had to fulfill the contract. So William Asher, who had been her husband at the time, who had been one of the producers of Bewitched, also worked on I Love Lucy and on tons of shows. Uh, he worked out a deal with ABC to come up with a show to fill in the remainder of the contract. So that was the Paul Lind show because they pulled him from being Uncle Arthur on Bewitched to have his own show uh, because he was already there and recognizable. But they didn't, I guess the viewers didn't buy into it. They didn't want him to be the main character. They like him to be that second fiddle, the Uncle Arthur or sort of the person that comes in and stirs things up and then trails off as opposed to being on weekly i thought it's hilarious it's on saturday night on antenna tv it's really really funny but again all those classic shows are cool huh oh yeah 100 percent. and it's fascinating how resonant they still are today like especially i mean sometimes the writing is is so good like mary tyler moore came out what end of the 60s 60s yeah she started uh 70 71 ish right after uh, dick van dyke ended and then uh, maybe a year or so, Mary Tyler Moore came in the uh, early 70s. Yeah. And and the writing is still very prevalent. Like like all of the same, you know, themes and uh, like uh, the, again, like the, the, the women's movement and, you know, her being like a single woman living by herself and working was like a big to do. And it's like a lot of the stuff that they're battling still kind of happened today. Yeah. The, the, the themes throughout, it's brilliant. And God bless, uh, God bless Sue Ann Nevins, huh? Betty White. Oh, 99, oh right? 99. Oh, she's, she's the last one. She is. She's actually, yeah. I think well, the Gary only McLeod one. Gary McLeod is still alive. Gary, Gary McLeod's still there. Murray. Yeah, Kevin still McLeod. Alive. Yeah, he used to be Captain Steubing on the love boat. <laughs> and Ed Asner. Lou Grant is still there. Right. Um, Ed Asner yeah. is my father. I literally joke about it all the time. I he, get it. I think of my father. So in like the second season or third season, the season when he gets a divorce, I'm like, not mom and dad. <laughs> but yeah, he's my father to a T. You actually sounded a little bit like Mary Tyler Moore when you did that. Anyway, so not my dad. Mr. Grant. <laughs> Mr. Grant. <laughs> 
Oh, Mary, my you have spunk. I hate spunk. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I just always wanted to be Rhoda, though. I just want to be the. I've oh, always yeah. made a Mary career a scrappy one in the corner. So I love. I love that she was a scrappy one. Although, did anybody ever pick up that they always called her the fat one, and she was like maybe a hundred pounds wet? You know, well, it's the same thing with Ethel uh, on I Love Lucy. She was a lot thinner, and they had her gain weight for the role. So she was thinner than Lucy, Vivian Vance. I mean, she the best episode felt. of all time is the operetta. Mm -hmm. The operetta Absolutely. episode. I mean, you can, everyone's always going to say the, the, the candy eating episode or, you know, the grape squashing episode. Uh-uh, operetta for me all day long. If you don't know it, go find it. It's on YouTube. It's Did you like when they traveled to California too? When they were in California in that fancy apartment? Oh, I don't remember that one. Oh, those are the later episodes where they actually go on a whole road trip to drive in a car all the way to, uh, and it's funny, some of the places they stop off and the things that happen to them uh, episode by episode, they go to California because Ricky has a movie deal. So she meets all, you know, she, of course, Lucy wants to meet all of these famous stars and she does all of these incredible things to try to meet the stars and she gets her the head. The restaurant, first. the restaurant behind the, the, the book. The Chinese with the hands and this. She, uh, she did a whole routine with Harpo Marx and the hat and all. Yeah, the later episodes, uh, they are in, um, and then, I don't know, it isn't, do they? No, they don't move to Connecticut to Westport and have the house. Do they? No, I don't think they do on I Love Lucy. They did on the Lucy Desi mm. comedy hour where they moved to Westport, Connecticut and they had this house and they had chickens and then Ethel and Fred miss them. So they leave New York, they move in the house next door. And then the star after star ended up being on the show. Really, yeah, that was a cool one too. The William Holden episode in the restaurant where ah. she wants to meet William Holden. That's all in California. <clears throat> yeah, and then right. and then he stares at her while she's eating, and she's See? very weird about it. And so, yeah, yeah I remember that's California. Yeah. That was California. Absolutely. They're so Absolutely. good. They're so good. I'm not saying there's not great TV shows now, but there's yeah. something to be said about how it's been 60 years, 50, 60 years, and those TV shows still hold up as being entertaining and well written and exciting. You know, it's a really good one that you know people don't talk about as much now. That I would recommend you check out. Um, they released. Three years of it on DVD, Sony did, and then they stopped. They should have finished the rest of the season. But it was a really fantastic drama, and you can see it on YouTube. It's not in the best, you know, some of the some of the episodes are nice and clear because people probably lifted them off the DVD and uploaded it on YouTube. But uh, there are some episodes where people just uploaded what they taped off TV. Mm -hmm. But it's a series, a dramatic series, that Aaron Spelling, who created Charlie's Angels and all of these mega yeah, shows in the 70s dynasty and hotel uh father of tory spelling um he was a prolific tv producer and they interviewed him once and they said of all the shows you've done for television what is the one you are the most proud of i mean you have hit after hit after hit he said it was the show starring uh james broderick matthew's father Matthew Broderick's father, Seda Thompson, a brilliant actress, Christy McNichol, Gary Frank, and Meredith Baxter Burney, and Quinn Cummings. And it was called Family. And it was set in a suburban community in Pasadena, California. And it was on ABC. And uh, you could see the episodes on YouTube. Uh, really incredible storylines about family and drama and life and and struggle and happiness and all a really cool series um, called Family. And he said that was his favorite of all of them. Yeah, Rose, Rosemary got it, Family. Really, really terrific show. One of the best written shows, uh, dramatic weekly shows that was on ABC. But you can see that on uh, on, e on uh, YouTube. We should be- Oh, I'm looking this up. That will be like a, you know, oh, I, I always go down to a midnight deep dive when I can't sleep. That's definitely yeah. something I'll be looking they at. They cover like everything that we go through in life. I mean, really cool stuff. Yeah. So welcome my friend by way <laughs> of Boston to New York. Now people are probably saying, like you and I were talking about, cause I was mentioning my grandparents hailed from Boston and our whole yeah. Boston, we got Massachusetts, Connecticut connections, the whole bit. We, you and I might even be cousins, third cousins for all we know. No. Boston accent. No, 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 that was that was beaten out of me. Yeah, right. yeah we were, I was telling I was telling Jim earlier that uh 
literally, I never thought that I had a deep accent ever until I went to college. And uh, the first day of orientation, I met a girl named Jessica from Westchester. And uh, she noticed that I had a hard time saying my R's. And mm -hmm. she made, she literally made a list of every time I said something like wicked, like wicked pissa, <laughs> or like Cape Cod, or whenever I like just made this weird Boston spread accent. And then slowly, yeah, yeah all of my, um, all of my relatives, yeah. No, we never do a quad. It's cod. It's, everything's very spread. Cod. Yeah. Yeah. Pack the cod. Cod. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going down to Cape Cod. I'm in Falmouth, Hyannis, Westport. Port, with, if there's an R, yeah. And um, what do you say? Red Sox? Red Sox? Red, Red Sox. Red Sox. Yeah. yeah. How, how, do you, how do you say the city you're in now? <laughs> New York. See, you say, the, you say New the York. Yeah. But if, there's a, but if there's an R, that that can have that kind of swoopy, like New York. New York, right. It's right. like Cape Cod, but uh, um, like uh, Westport. Yes. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. How do you I say see? I don't know. I'm probably doing a terrible Boston accent. It's been so long <laughs> since I've ever had it. I would not, I would never come to me for a Boston for accent a Boston advice. Accent. Right. No, no. But my dad, however, uh, literally, I'll never forget, I was doing summer stock in Maine. I've told the story to anyone who will listen, truly. So it's not even that good of a story, but if you'll listen. Oh, oh, the levities are listening. <laughs> um, I was doing summer stock in Maine and uh, I was doing Fiddler on the Roof there. And <laughs> um, I was not what I thought I would be. I was not like the young model, the tailor. No, I was the rabbi, the non-Jewish Italian American. I was the rabbi. But anyway, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm from Boston. I'm from just outside Boston, five miles outside. And uh, they were like, does, does your dad have an accent? And I was like, oh, he does, very, very thick. Although he's built and looks like Ed Asner. <laughs> and uh, and the very first thing he says, he pulls up to the theater and rolls down the window and goes, hey, Deej, where should I park the car? And literally, that's the first thing he said. And everyone laughed and laughed. It was the most Boston thing you could ever say in the world. But he's probably the only person I can think of. Maybe my brother sometimes. Like, especially if we transplant back and we stay home for a hot second. Like, we'll have an accent. But I don't think I really do. I think I'm so... Yeah, it's right. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't really hear the typical like some of my cousins that are in the area and Boston yeah. area and all over Brookline, Framingham, Fitchburg. Oh, I mean, they're all they're all oh, over. Oh yeah, the, like, used to race it super high. Yeah, yeah, they they just really. Uh, and you mentioned have, Waltham. All my family's from Waltham. Waltham, really? So that's yeah. uh, and that's how you say it, right? Waltham, not Waltham. 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 Yeah. My grandparents uh, on my mother's side hailed from there originally. Boston and then Waltham. Yeah. But I mean, those Massachusetts towns, man, they're really hard to pronounce. They're really weird. <laughs> they, yeah, Worcester. Come on. Everyone's, everyone no, has. I'd say Worcester, Worcester, right. But some, I have a friend, my college roommate was from Boston, uh, actually originally Taunton and Boston. Oh, yeah. Taunton yeah. that area he worked for the Taunton Gazette, then Boston. And he would, he would, he wouldn't even say Worcester. He'd say Wista. Worcester, Worcester, yeah. but yeah. it's W O R. Oh, it's not Worcestershire or Worcester. Or no, Worcester. Worcester. <laughs> it looks like Worcester. It does, yes. It and does. it's not to be confused with Gloucester, which is close to Boston. Gloucester is right outside of Boston, next to Lynn. Worcester is more central, Mass. Now, my this is a real interesting trail. My um, dentists wife's brother, we were over at their house uh, there in Connecticut and we were at their house for dinner and they had the TV on, big screen TV in the living room. And it was the Oprah Winfrey show and they're pouring wine and cheese and all this stuff and we're having a good time. And then my dentist's wife, who's also a dentist says, oh yeah, look at the screen. There's my brother again. I'm like, wait a minute your brother, how could that be your brother? And, um, and I'm looking at the screen and it's, um, well, first she said who her cousin was. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Her cousin is Conan O'Brien who hails from. Oh yeah. So then I put it together because her last name is Leary and who was on the screen Dennis Leary, the actor Dennis Leary, who's there from Worcester, Massachusetts. So I'm like, 
I'm saying to her, wait a minute. All I see on the screen is Dennis Leary and Oprah Winfrey. She goes, yeah, that's my brother. He's talking probably about the family. He's talking, my mother's probably having a fit because he's talking about the family again, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> talking about his new book or whatever. And it was Dennis. And, and you're uh, picking your jaw Leary up off the floor from Worcester. And she, that's when she said, and ask us who our cousin is. And he's from Brookline, Massachusetts. Said, "Who's uh, uh, Dennis Leary? That's pretty good. We can wrap the evening now if you want." She goes, "No, ask us who the cousin is." I mean, it's nonchalant because it's her brother, it's her cousin. She said, "Our cousin is Conan O'Brien." So Dennis Leary's cousin is Conan O'Brien, all hailing from that part of Massachusetts. Wow! I, my one thing to fame, I used to always talk about uh, my. The, the doctor that delivered me uh, was Dr. Krasinski and his son was John Krasinski. So we used to grow up all the time. My dad's a, a doctor and we used to grow up a lot and they would hang out with the Krasinskis. And then one day, I think this must've been like when I was in college, she was like, you know, Dr. Krasinski. And I was like, yeah. She's like, his son's on a huge TV show. And I was like, yeah, yeah. sure. Mom. Yeah, cool, whatever. And she's like, it's called The Office. And I went, what? The office. John, and then it never <laughs> dawned on me that John Krasinski would ever be, I never even knew he was an actor. And I really, truly never really knew him very much. But mm. like, it's, it's I, to this day, I'm always like, why didn't I ever become friends with them? Why was I never part of that family? What happened there? There's still time. There's still time, right? You know, John Krasinski, if you're, if you're watching out there, your dad and my dad are very close friends. So inevitably we should be friends. You should be friends. That's right. Second yes. friends or something like second cousins? Is that how it works? I'll take it. <laughs> Listen, I'll take it. Just friends that get Christmas cards is fine with me. <laughs> so back home in Boston area, how did you get started? What were those inspirations in your family or in your life that got you into wanting to become an actor, singer, performer, DJ? Oh gosh, well, it's actually twofold. So the first was my grandfather, who's no longer with us, but um, I, he's actually my namesake. So his name is Dorman John. Um, and uh, they went, he went by DJ, so I. everyone always thinks that I'm a DJ, but I'm not a DJ. I'm not cool enough to be a disc jockey. Spin records. Uh, I'm literally just named DJ, which confuses everybody. Um, and uh, But he was this unbelievable opera singer and also chemist. He had this like dual life where he would sing at night and then do chemistry and stuff during the day, and it was really cool. And he always encouraged singing, but I never, in my brain, I never thought I could do it. It never was something I thought I should do. And, but he always was very passionate about it and they pushed me to do music. So through his guidance, I took like clarinet lessons and piano lessons and all of that. And then when I was in high school, I'll never forget this. I was sitting in chorus class my sophomore year of high school and we were doing a choral arrangement of a whole new world. And we were all auditioning for the solo and I didn't want to audition. I was so embarrassed about it. And um, my chorus teacher was like, you should audition for this, made me sing in front of everybody and then made me take voice lessons with the local voice teacher in Boston and the rest was history. Mm. And he actually passed about a year ago now, his name was Skip Johnson and he really cultivated, not just me, like it wasn't like he pinpointed me, it was like we went to this high school that was very rich in the arts and yeah. a lot of us went to school for opera or theater or singing or what have you. And he was very much, um, just a cultivator of the arts. And so, and he helped me apply for colleges and for music. And I was in these opera competitions every year. I'm a terrible opera singer, but I tried. But you tried. And, but I tried. And, you know, I was very fortunate enough to be part of a family that was like, you could go to school for finger painting and, you know, we'll figure it out. And they, they're they still supporting to this day. I mean, I think everybody that's here today has had to pivot in some way sure. in the past year and figure it out somehow. So, you know, um, I hope you all, I'm assuming you all have like a safety net of friends that have encouraged you to pivot. And, uh, you know, mine, uh, mine is like so, so deep. There are so many people that are just always yes ands in my life that are like, sure, you want to do virtual events? You got it. I'll be there. <laughs> so how yeah. have you been pivoting? What are some of the things you've been doing to pivot? Oh my gosh, what haven't I? Mm. Uh, so, you know, at first it was, um, and I've been doing a lot of live concerts, a lot of like right here, like literally with this uh, this setup that I've got here, I can give myself a little reverb so I can do a little singing. And mm. uh, so I've been doing virtual concerts. Uh, it's been hard because you can't really be all together. Uh, 
Right. So it's been a little difficult. So instead of doing like our, my Carol King show, which is all of us singing in tight three-part harmony, kind of like Jersey Boise. Mm -hmm. uh, so two of us started to do like a Neil Sedaka, Frankie Valley set. So we've been doing that. We've been calling it high notes. Um, Cause one of the guys that I do the show with all the time was a Frankie Valley and Jersey boys. Mm, right. And uh, so we were like, well, you sing really high and I sing really loud. I'll do Neil Sedaka and you do Frankie Valley. It'll be great. And so we've been doing that. And then uh, I created a show with my friend Erica, who's this unbelievable Broadway singer. And so we just did a show uh, last week called Bosom Buddies, where it was very like B. Arthur and uh, Angela Lansbury, you know, we'll always be bosom buddies. But she's in South Carolina and I'm here, so we could at least do solos. You can do, right. Yeah. And then on top of that, just like doing events. So I do bingo and trivia and a show every other Tuesday through a theater in Queens called Name That Tune, which is totally free. If anybody ever wants to show up, it's entirely free. And you can win a $25 Amazon gift card. And it's an hour. And it's all great music. This past week was um, girl groups. So we did everything from, you know, the Shirelles to Destiny's Child. Mm. And, uh, but really, truly, anytime anybody's been like, do you want to set up all of your equipment and sit in your living room and just interact with humans? Um, I'm here. Sign me up. That's it, right? <laughs> you know, and I feel like you're probably similar. You're probably the same way where you're like, sure, you know, if people will show up and uh, they'll have me talk and have a lovely warm conversation and maybe encourage some arts and stuff live, I'm there. It's one of the reasons why I started this show back a year ago, some 300 episodes live daily is because I do similar work professionally in television and radio. And I said, you know what? This Everybody for years has told me to do this entertainment lifestyle talk show series type thing. And what the heck? We'll bring the equipment in and let's just roll and see what happens. And boom, you know, yeah. create a wonderful community of people here. The love it ease. I mean, I'm reading the comments and everyone is saying like, just they're all reiterating what a great safety net they've had, you know, and just yeah. a, people being like, because I mean, I think they're especially it's a pandemic and no one knows what they're doing. And especially like, I mean, I can only speak from, you know, my own personal experience, but, you know, my entire identity is kind of wrapped in like being on stage and cultivating. Yeah. That right. live music element, of the energy of the audience that's right in front of you, as opposed to, you know, the the filter that's in between right now of but technology. These comments, these comments make all the difference. It makes it feel like a live moment, and we can all connect. You know, it it kind of it kind of makes you feel like the old AOL chat rooms. Dare I say it? Remember right. when like the internet right. was kind of very fresh, and you were like, "I'm going to go online and meet someone in South Africa," and then you're like, hey, like Africa. <laughs> you know, and you're like, "Hey, girl!" And I like made a friend uh, in Pennsylvania on like some like theater camp chat room, and that's kind of what this year has felt like. You know. Mm -hmm. it, still been able to connect, but maybe in a different way. And there's been some growing pains maybe along the way with internet that doesn't like to work. And um, mm, right now, oh, yeah, Wi-Fi can really city. make you look like. Uh, <laughs> or yeah, or just like sound, you know, uh, you'll probably hear throughout the night, but like when it's warm in New York City for the past year, everyone's really into these really loud mufflers. Yeah, they call, yeah. call them vroom vrooms and they're so annoying and loud. And it's, it's so disrupted if you're like, you're singing like, you know, stupid Cupid for, you know, an audience of a hundred people on, on Zoom. And all of a sudden you're like, vroom, 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 and you're like, stupid Cupid, stop picking on me. <laughs> it comes in at the wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's how it always goes. It right. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. And then you start singing to them. But you know, it's, it's, I think some of the fun and some of the, um, and, and you guys out there can let us know in the comments. But I think sometimes when we fall on our face, that's kind of the most exciting. Oh, I love those moments. That's why oh, I love uh, live stage television, radio. I love it live. I almost prefer it live. I mean, I've done a lot of scripted teleprompter and, you know, you're reading this, reading that type of work, but I really love the live because anything goes, anything can happen. They're counting on you to make sense, make it look smooth, effortless, and like it was supposed to happen. And I've been on so many scenarios, especially on stage, radio and television, where something seriously went wrong, either behind the scenes, something stuck, something broke, somebody's ill, something happened. And I'm, I have to stand out there. There was one time where I was on public television talking to the camera for like 45 minutes straight uninterrupted with no break because they were running some two part movie 
and the master control operators upstairs in the master control uh, studio realized they had run part two of the movie before running part one. So when part two, when that tape was ending, the credits were rolling, but there was all this block of dead air. So I was co-hosting with who happened to be at the time, the program director. They pulled him out of the studio and left me on with nobody else to bounce off of, which I love doing. And I just, they said, Jim, keep stretching, keep filling. Just talk about PBS, how great it is. Just talk about all these things. We have no shows to go to. There's no breaks on public television. There's nowhere to go. The camera's on you. Go. And people are like, oh my God, you must have been scared. That must have I said, that was one of the best times ever. I love that because they're depending on you and anything can happen. And you have to make up. I mean, they were handing me everything too. They were handing me tote bags and DVDs and talk about the tote bag, talk about the mug, talk about. And so the, the producer, she was coming and you didn't see her, but all of a sudden I'm looking at the camera and I see an arm come with a new thing. I had no idea what it was. And I would just bring up, and we also have this. Oh, it's the mug. <laughs> you know, mm, like, you can drink out of it. You can drink out of it too. And it changes colors too. Actually, there is one. I have the Mr. Rogers one. And if you put <gasps> hot tea and coffee or what have you in it, uh, he goes from the cardigan to his suit and then back to the cardigan. Oh, I have it's a cat's brand one. New. <laughs> that's the musical. And <laughs> if you put water in it, the cat eyes go up. No, but um, I always call this my superpower. Without fail, I will forget a lyric. Without fail. On almost every song, I could be the most rehearsed person in the world. And Rosemary, who just commented, she has seen me forget many, many a lyric. It's just kind of like how like my think friend... the audience knows, or oh, yeah. I always call it out. You do. I yeah. no, for the longest time, I was so embarrassed about it, and I was like, I'm such a perfectionist, and you know, I, I want to show up and give the best performance I can. And if it's a musical, that's different. Like if I'm forgetting things, that's not okay. But um, especially with doing concert work, I've realized that the forgetting is part of the fun and I call yeah. it my superpower and I tell people to look out for it. And I was like, it's inevitable, I'm gonna forget. So whoever can point it out first, like me jumbling something or making something up, I'm gonna give you a CD. Or like, you know what I mean? I'll be like, like you've won the prize. Cause without fail, I'll forget something. And my friend, Michael, who I actually ran, this is why I love New York City. I ran into him today on my run. I was running and there he was waving at me. <laughs> Um, but he always knows that I'm about to forget a lyric and it's always during the song, You've Got a Friend. And I'm always like, when you're down and troubled. <sighs> and he always starts singing it for me and he points me, oh gosh, now I'm here. See, and I'm gonna forget a lyric. But I'm always, I always forget like the lyric during You've Got a Friend and Michael always sings it for me, that's it. Uh, and Linda's That's asked your if friends I, are for. <laughs> I'd be, I would be happy to sing something, but I'll ask you guys, I'll give you guys some options and you can pick or something. So <laughs> would you say that you're a singer who's an actor or an actor who sings? Was singing what really has is near and dear to your heart and your soul and what came first for you? Sure. I'm definitely, I love to sing. I love the, I, I'll quote Britney Spears, who is my patron saint. Um, that uh, I love the feel I get when I'm singing. Yeah. And more importantly, I love like, you know, when all the stars align um, on stage or weirdly, it's been kind of happening, it's slowly happening in these virtual realms where like the song is right and I feel the vocal feels right. And, you know, the vibe is all, it becomes magical and everybody kind of can forget their troubles for a moment. And the lyrics are obviously very important too. But it's really, you know, in the acting too. But you know, the the actual feel of singing is my favorite. And then obviously the rest is just as important. But yeah. But it's what comes first is the singing, absolutely. And we have some, we have some proof of that, DJ. Actually, oh, no. yes. Tell us about Carol's Kings and the formation of that. That's really really cool. Oh, I love this story. I love this story because it's it's not. I I didn't do it by myself. So um, I, I produced it and I technically created it and I cultured it, but, uh, or curated it, but um, it was like kind of the love child of me and some friends. So uh, for years as, as you know, a New York City actor, everyone always said, but what do you do to make money? Mm. And the truth was I was selling t-shirts at Broadway shows. So I, we used to say in the show, like you might've seen me at this show and this show and this show, I sold you t-shirts. I helped you find your seat, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Wait, that was you? That might have been me if you listen. What were some of the shows? Hamilton. Um, I used to run the live lottery for Hamilton every day, 2,500 people. 
Mm. Um, I, I worked merchandise for Finding Neverland. I worked Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Um, I did everything at the Barrymore for a long time. So Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, mm. um, Cape Let Chet in the, in the Present, um, Alice and Janney and Six Degrees of Separation. I did a million shows. Oh, I um, and, but I would do it in between you know, gigs because you gotta, you gotta pay your bills. And um, one day I was at the Music Box Theater and it was a painfully boring play, which will remain nameless because I don't want to offend anybody. But um, I was trying to come up with an idea of a show because to make money sometimes, uh, we would, I would do like Frankie Valley and the Four Season tribute shows or these 50 tribute shows and you would travel around the country doing them. And I was sitting downstairs in the lower lounge of the theater uh, with my friend Michael, who was an usher at the theater, but also an unbelievable singer, super great talent. And he said, what about Carol King? And I went, I love Carol King. I love everything about Carol King. I know all of her music. We should do Carol King. And we were like, but we should do it like Jersey Boys. So Jersey Boys, but Carol King music. And because we wanted it to debut on cruise ships, cruise ships always have the least amount of space cabin wise. We were like, we're gonna have three people instead of four to save space. So then we, I had my friend who did all the music for Beautiful on Broadway and Jersey Boys create all of Carol King's songs, but with tight harmony as if we were Jersey Boys. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and that's literally how it started. You know, it took like a, a year or two to kind of get going. We had this awful script. Talk mm. about failing. We had this, it was all like cheesy comedy. And then we realized that people just wanted the music and didn't yeah. necessarily want us to be like, knock, knock. Who's there in between the songs? So then uh, once that really got ironed out, this theater in upstate New York gave us a chance and let us do this awful script for like 30 shows. Mm -hmm. It was bad. And they were so, talk about safety net guys. Ta yeah. Somebody out there believes in you and they will go to the end of the world for you, even if what you got is not good yet. Um, and we, but we figured it out. We realized it was not working and we scrapped it all. And we ended up just being ourselves and singing the music. And we ended up doing it on uh, celebrity cruises, Norwegian cruises, Princess, p and um, uh, I think about a year, almost a year and a half ago, we were at Caesar's Palace for mm. 2000 people, which was cool. And, you know, it just kind of kept snowballing and snowballing because truly I wish it were us. I think it's just her music. I mean, Carol King's music is kind of the everyman. There's no way to not hear this, you know, there's no way to not listen to her lyrics like, you've got to get up every morning with a smile on your face. Who doesn't want to hear that? Well, it's funny. So, so I, I really wish it was us, but it's her views. Like, I'm sure it's you guys as well. <laughs> it's got to be uh, a combo. I, think, I hope it's a combo. At I least like 60 40. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'll take 60 40. And we do have her support. People always ask if she's going to shut us down. She literally gave me a quote at the beginning of this pandemic. And then we haven't had a show that I could tell anybody. But Carol King said, they're great. I'm going to put it on the poster on t shirts. Is that but, what um, she said? Yeah, so you're so, basically revealing that to the world right now on the gym. This is the July. reveal because what? I was going to do it in a show because I have an email. So, so let, let's uh, we'll have you say it again, but first, another world premiere exclusive on the gym master <laughs> show live. Usually, somebody has a new song, they have a new something. DJ has what's that line again from Carol King? Carol King has it. Well, I'm not going to say endorsed. No, 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 I don't want to get in trouble. Carol King is aware of Carol's Kings, the only all male Carol King tribute in the world. And she said that we are great. Wow. A world premiere <laughs> exclusive on our show once again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it's been great. And uh, no pun intended. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, when the pandemic, when the pandemic hit, we had three casts of the show. Cause what sort of, sort of started to happen is that the show started getting, um, it really got its groove. And then uh, like the British cruise lines were like, could we Britishize the show? And so we had a mm. cast there of super like handsome, like totally charming lads who took whatever we did and made it completely their own. And they were, they flew to Portugal to debut the show on p and cruises. And um, I was in Illinois with the show, doing the show at a performing arts center there. And another cast was in the Caribbean on a cruise ship. And literally the same day, Today, actually, a year ago, we all got shut down. It was, uh, yeah, this literally this, this is the today, as of today, it's the one year anniversary. Yeah. March 11th. Yeah. March 11th. Today's the one year anniversary. All the, uh, closures. Yep. I showed up to the stage door at the Batavia Fine Arts Center and they said, we have to cancel the show. Mm -hmm. um, we got Domino's pizza and a box of wine and, and just, you know. Yeah. 
ate and drank our sorrows. But and I had to get um, guys home from Portugal and also the Caribbean because I don't know if anybody out there knows, but some people got stuck on those cruise ships. They yes. couldn't get home. So for two days, I was like up for you know 48 hours just saying like they gotta get home they can't get stuck on a cruise ship i'm an independent contractor we're just singing carol king get them home <laughs> get them home <laughs> yeah so but you know we've 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 tried to keep active and um we've been doing lots of videos uh for you know retire we do lots of communities like florida communities and new jersey communities and you know we're doing lots of videos to be like we're still around we're just waiting for people to get vaccines and we want it to be right. safe and you know we don't want to push things uh, we're like some of the cruise lines are saying they're doing test cruises in may but even i'm like let's let's why don't we just you know Better safe than meet? sorry, right? I, I want us to all meet in the audience and I want to have that. I, I'm dying for that moment where we all can be in the same room and know that it's safe and just have a wild party again. Mm -hmm. right. Like it's going to speak volumes. Like, you know, it's going to feel so good. And then I don't, and nothing will feel worse than if you have that show and somebody gets sick. Exactly right. Exactly. So we're doing digital and virtual and to the best of our abilities and, you know, we're pivoting in all the ways we can and being patient for all the ways we can't. <laughs> well, we have a clip. <laughs> so you, nobody even has to leave their house or start their car because we have a clip of Carol's Kings. And uh, this clip, where were you guys performing? Do you recall? Um, is this, is, oh God, is it the one of me? Um, we were definitely that one. I want to say. <laughs> is it the one of me? No, it's the one of the understudy. We didn't want to have the one of you on. <laughs> oh gosh! Of course, we do. <laughs> Listen, there there have been You're times. A friendly show. I have. <laughs> there have been times though that I've definitely um, done an interview or something, or or so that I think I did a radio show once where then they played a clip that was not me because I mean again a couple times there's been a couple times where like a theater will like want to do the show but we're I'm like we're on these cruises for the next two months and they're like well would you um, would you let us cast students and I was like absolutely this music should be everywhere. So, you know, um, this one, I believe we were on Celebrity Cruises. I think we were on the Celebrity Reflection. Celebrity, yeah. yeah celebrity they great. Had, oh, they, every cruise line has its own um, vibe and uh, thing, but Celebrity is definitely, uh, they took the first chance on us, so they have a very special spot in my heart. But yeah. Norwegian, Norwegian's like, like mom and dad. Norwegian is, yeah. They're, they're, the, they're the ones that like, where do you want to go and how long do you want to go there? And, you know, they like really were like, we we believe in you. But but Celebrity was like, you know, that, um, you know, like the first the first cast, casting director that gave you your chance. Right. And you, you just will always remember them of being the, I remember where I was. I was in New Orleans. I was working on the Chicago national tour as the merchandise seller. And I got the call during a selling period and I knew the number and I, I took the phone call anyway because no one was buying anything. It was towards the end of selling at intermission. And it was a, a the buyer from Celebrity who said they wanted to take a chance for us. And they offered us, I'll never forget, the cruise was September 26th of 2017. And uh, I tried to act all calm and collected. I hung up the phone and I immediately burst into tears. Thank you. That's my story. Yes, it's so <laughs> I wasn't cool calm or collected or and collected I, and then the terror set in because i was like oh we have to do this now in front of an audience and yeah. i don't want it to stink uh but i believe this isn't from that first ship but i think it's from uh, a ship not far after so this is actually very fresh from the beginning i think all right keeping it fresh on the gym master show line i, think I had a haircut which i don't now you don't have a haircut now that's not a haircut oh no it's like i have so much pomade like pushing it down oh, it's sort of, oh you're doing the tricks like me well, if I took the hat off, my it's my hair is the longest it's ever been in my life. I've mentioned it on the show a couple of times. It is down to here. <gasps> Whoa! Full, it looks like a Greek god or something, and I'm not Greek. <laughs> they always say I've got two wigs. It's got, it's oh, like there. it's the real deal. But right now, it's all pulled back. It's tucked under the hat. <laughs> I love it. I always joke that I have two wigs. This is my Rachel Maddow wig. If anybody out there watches no. Rachel Maddow, <laughs> but and you're not wearing black. Uh, I should. Oh my you gosh! You don't crumple the paper at the end. And she lives in Boston. And uh, um, my other wig is Liza Minnelli. It's just kind of like this be Justin Biebery swoop. <laughs> but I gave Rachel Maddow tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Well, here is Carol's Kings with DJ and the gang. Enjoy, everybody. We'll be back. 
with much more. Enjoy. Come on, you gotta swing your hips now. Come on, baby. Jump up. Jump back. back, back. Oh, well, I think you've got the now. Looking out on the morning rain. How I used to feel uninspired. Out. But when I knew I had to face another day, Lord, it made me feel so tired. I'm close to you, you make me feel so alive. So alive. You make me feel like a natural. Welcome to Carol's Kings. Uh, what is your name? Joni Mitchell. Oh, my God. Well, that's crazy. And where are you from? Yeah. Alberta, Canada. <laughs> well, isn't that a coincidence? Well, well, Joni Mitchell from Alberta, Canada. We would like to sing you a song from your dear friends, Carol King, James Taylor, and... and Jimmy, the recording studio janitor. Are we still on for brunch, Joni? Joni and Jimmy are best friends. I have so many friends now. Look how okay. many friends I have. Just play, play, play. Let me tell you now when I come home feeling tired and me I go up where the air is fresh and sweet Up on the roof Winter, spring, summer or fall All you have to do is call And I'll be there yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm in public and I'm overwhelmed I lock myself in a Starbucks bathroom and I laugh sob for like an hour. And tonight with words unspoken And you say that I'm the only one But I have a confession. You have to put exclusive up. Huh? You have to. I have a very. I have oh, a confession. Exclusive? Oh, you have to. exclusive? Okay. This is a world exclusive. Right. Here's another world premiere exclusive. And here we go. Three, two, one. World premiere exclusive from DJ. That is not from Celebrity Cruises. That is actually from the very first promo we ever filmed and has never been made public because that's what I used to book cruises. So there's so much about, you guys got to see some of the terrible comedy that we cut, that weird <laughs> hat. And, oh gosh, I'm cringing. <laughs> but so no one, oh, that's literally not, we don't use any of that aside from the music. <laughs> That's the one you sent. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, here's a fun story. The guy on the oh, piano. Look, look what they're saying. James oh. is fantastic. Crystal Connecticut is fantastic. Mona, Louisiana. Uh, oh. Great show. It looks like fun. Oh, my God. I love it. From Kathy in Cleveland. Rosemary. Oh. Bravo, DJ. The show and you are brilliant. Claps from Tracy. Wonderful from Mary. Maybe you should go back to that version. <laughs> it I looks mean, like you're having a blast during the show. Absolutely brilliant show. Oh. Looking forward to seeing this show. Uh, let's hope a year from now we all on the cruise together looking back on this. We're actually working on a Jim Master Show Live Lovety Cruise <gasps> for 2022. And uh, Linda goes, Mr. Lovety, get that Lovety Cruise dancing shoe on. And DJ sings Party Time, LOL. Yeah. 
That sounds we like a good idea. No, they it, love this. Uh, oh, Marcia. no, the music is all the same. The music is all the same. It's the same kind of harmony, the same kind of vibe, but it just doesn't. The it's jokes are better. There's no joke. <laughs> it's just us being us. And um, the, here's another fun fact. Here's another story that no one out there. World premiere about. exclusive. That's World this premiere. is the third one tonight, folks. Well, because I didn't. Did, okay, did I send you that clip? I sent you the. Oh no. Well, that's a I love Maureen. Maureen, who who is a nurse, don't cringe. That was fantastic. Well, thank Juanita you. in South Africa loves you in South Africa. So much fun, lovely music, fantastic. Austin Field, very nice performance. Marsha Lyon, who's in Massachusetts, I um, loved it. It looks like fun. Well, so. it is. It's only gotten a thousand times better. It's become. It, the, Obviously, that was some good editing, I think, on someone's part. It's good. If nobody's well, seen it before, they love what they're seeing. That's, yeah. what, that's what the booker from Celebrity Cruise Lines booked us off of. And then we had it refilmed with like five cameras with like a huge band. And we came up from underneath the stage and like all sorts of cool stuff on Celebrity. And it was like very, it made us look way fancier than we are. But here's another fun story. So the short guy, that guy that was on the piano, who I'm still friends with, there's, um, there's no animosity here. He quit the show a week before our very first cruise. So in that promo, we couldn't use it anymore because the guy that was playing the keyboard, he wasn't in the show anymore. He quit. So <laughs> that's why. I so he's gone. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Yeah, and I saw that and I went, oh, it's Andrew. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so funny. I can't. So I thought I sent you uh, like a fancy schmancy video, but I actually am really glad that that's the video that was sent. I'm loving it. I mean, I love what a Ooh, great story. Dang. And then, you know, boom, honestly, boom, boom, boom. After boom. a year of sitting in my boom. apartment, that was really fun to see. Just like, see? just Everybody so. Everybody says that. When they come on our show, everybody's saying that. When they come on and we get to uh, show clips and have fun and converse this way, uh, that they're feeling really, really good about themselves. And it gives them a little hope for the future and for things you know, coming up. We've got another clip here. This is Today For You clip. Oh, is, my tell God. Tell us about that one. Oh, so uh, uh, my dream, one of my dream roles was to play Angel and Rent. And uh, it's one of the first musicals I ever saw. I actually saw it at the Charles Playhouse outside of Boston um, in their pre-Broadway workshops in, I believe, 95, 95 or 96. And um, uh, Angel is actually the drag queen in the show. And when I got the chance to play it, um, I was so ugly. I'm not a beautiful drag queen, but I had so much heart. And actually one of my very best friends on, um, when I toured with Jesus Christ Superstar, played my uh, romantic opposite in the show named Collins. So the experience was just so much fun. Uh, I'll never forget the first day in costume, they were like, DJ, you're gonna do your own makeup as a drag queen. And I was like, got it, no problem. I'll do it. No, no worries. And I did it. And I walked out and the director looked at me and he said, we're going to hire a makeup artist for you, DJ. And they did. <laughs> but there's a clip of me doing the show that I actually found on YouTube um, that I was like, I might have not been pretty, but I was proud of it. I had a great time and I really enjoyed the show. And more than anything, the cast of people and artists on that stage were really stellar. And it was just a group of people that were really awesome to work with, which I know, Jim, you know, when you're in a studio of people that you're like, I love working with you. Yeah. It, it, the whole experience just becomes it's so- tough to top that feeling, right? Yeah. yeah. That, that team feeling and we're all in it together. And there's nothing better than that, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. here's today's for you clip. Enjoy. <laughs> and then we'll see DJ's reaction after. I'm nervous. <laughs> World premiere exclusive number four. Here we go. That's cool. That's really, really cool. I Kinda loved cool. it. I was so, I'm so glad that that video was pixely though, because guys, I was not pretty. I was so not pretty. And my poor uh, <laughs> friend, Angelo, who had to fall in love with me every night was just the best actor in the world. Cause he was probably looking at my busted looking face. <laughs> he was so good. <laughs> he was so good. Uh, he came over. Uh, we, we haven't really been seeing uh, many, anybody during the pandemic, but every no. Sunday I, I try to make pasta. I love to make pasta from scratch. And um, he joined me about a month, like maybe three weeks or a month ago. Go 
uh, for pasta and it was really good to see him. Very nice, very yeah. nice. The Boston kid makes pasta in the big city, in the big apple. I try to every <laughs> Sunday, every Sunday. Now look, Maureen in uh, Arizona says, I am smiling so big right now. Loved that, love that. <sighs> Thanks yeah. Maureen. She loved oh, it. Was really fun to do, it was really fun to do and super special. I did that in New Hampshire. So oh, that, that was in New Hampshire? That was in New Hampshire and Manchester. Manchester, that's right. Now yeah. here's tragedy plus scene. Tell us oh, about that. Oh gosh. One. Oh, that's long. You might want to fast forward that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Your mean, reactions are funny. I mean, if you guys want to hear a whole a whole song, that's cool. Oh, they do. Uh, they they were already asking if you were going to sing. Well, all right. Five minutes. They asked that. All Is right. Gonna sing? So, Is gonna sing? Yeah. I'll, I'll. I mean, and I can always sing live too. Um, but uh, so uh, I got the immense pleasure of touring Europe doing Saturday Night Fever, you know, the Bee Gees, John Travolta musical. And I played uh, the role of Bobby C. I'm, I sort of uh, tend to be mostly 17 Italian and scrappy. I've always been like Sunny Latieri in uh, Greece. And I've always been uh, Chachi Arcola in Happy Days. And uh, this was no different. I played Bobby C. And uh, if you guys remember the movie, the role of Bobby, he gets mm -hmm. his girlfriend pregnant and the whole show or the whole movie, he's like really struggling with the fact of like, what do I do? Do I get married? Do we have the baby? And he keeps trying to ask people for advice. And uh, in the musical, no one listens to him. And so he sings a song where he's contemplating what to do. And uh, actually my co-creator of Carol's Kings is the girl in the scene in this. She uh, has since gone on to do Something Rotten on Broadway and Frozen on Broadway or the Something Rotten Broadway tour and Frozen on Broadway. And she choreographed us in Carol's Kings, but she played Stephanie Mangano. And uh, in this scene and song, uh, I ask her, like, I'm like, hey, Stephanie, uh, if you if you had a friend who got a girlfriend pregnant, what would you do? And she goes, I'd kill myself and pushes <laughs> me. And then I sing this ultimately incredibly dramatic song uh, where I decide to kill myself. What a light song for tonight. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I'm sure there's levity in there somewhere, right? If somebody comes to save you. <laughs> uh, no, no. In the next scene, I jump off a bridge. <laughs> 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 Listen, the European audiences love yep. Saturday Night Fever. And it's a great oh, song. Yes. You don't have to play the whole thing if you don't want to, but it's, it's a fun song. Look, they want you to sing live too. Mm. I will. I'll absolutely sing live. Let's That's sing. totally no problem. We do. I love your talent uh, and energy. And what a voice as wow. well. Rosemary says, great fun. You were gorgeous. And I wish I had those legs. <laughs> they were wood. Rosemary, they were absolutely wood. They were wild. <laughs> That's funny. All right, gang, here we go. Here's that clip that he uh, so eloquently introduced for us. Enjoy. And then we can't wait to see DJ's reaction after this one, too. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I forgot my records, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Stephanie, you you a dancer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what I really do is work for this big record producer in Manhattan. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, very big producer. You want to know who came into the office the other day? Yeah. Elton John. Far out. Yeah, pretty groovy, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, hey, listen, you get a minute. Yeah. Listen, you uh, you seem to know a lot of things, right? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I um, <coughs> I got this friend of mine, you know, and uh, and he's got this girlfriend, um, Pauline, and um, and uh, <laughs> he got her pregnant. So uh, so I I just wanted to know uh, if you had the choice between getting married or um, doing something stupid to yourself, w what would you do? Uh, well, who would I have to marry? So you'd <laughs> have to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd kill myself. <laughs> uh, it was very nice meeting you, Stephanie. <laughs> so here I stand on the edge of the night, nothing in my life, no one to love me. I keep trying to be somebody, but nobody listens. Nobody listens. 
and the pain don't go away. It opens up the door to yesterday. I thought she'd be the first. I thought she'd be the last. But time is in control, my love. And the die is cast. The die is cast. Tragedy. When the feeling's gone, you can't go on. Tragedy. When the morning cries and you don't know why it's Time's hard to bear. With no one to love you, you're going nowhere. Night and day, there's a burning. just can't take it all alone. I really should be holding you, holding you, loving you, loving you. Tragedy. When you lose control and you've got no soul. Tragedy. When the morning cries and you don't know why it's hard to bear. With no one beside you, you're going nowhere. Hey, Bobby. Hey, can I get those keys? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, 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 sure, here. Here. Hey, uh, uh, listen, Tony, you got a minute? Because, uh, because, uh, I'm getting, I'm getting married, Tony. <laughs> oh, Bobby. Hey, look, you get married, we'll all go with you on your honeymoon, all right? Tony, I don't want to marry Pauline, but everybody says that I gotta. Hey, who says that? Uh, her parents, uh, my parents, the, the priest, the, the freaking high school guidance counselor. I mean, what'll I do, huh? Um, hey, uh, okay, listen, you and me, we've been friends for a long time, right? And, uh, and, um, and, 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 and I'm hurting, and, um, and, and I'm always, I'm always screwing up. Bobby, come on, everybody screws up, all right? Yeah? Look, I gotta be going now if I'm gonna help oh, will you. Will you call me tonight? tonight? Yeah, I'll call you tonight. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, later. Call me tonight! Tragedy. When you lose control and you've got no soul, tragedy. When the morning cries and you don't know why it's hard to bear. With no one beside you, you're going nowhere. You look for somebody, there's nobody there. The tragedy is that nobody cares. Very nice, very nice. And I slowly descend below the stage, and everyone's like, I thought it was B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. It was such a fun musical, and I was such a sad, I was the sad one. What they don't see that I see is you uh, you sing along to the clips as they're happening. I like that. I, you know, when oh, my God. We're showing the clips. You're getting back into character, which I think is cool. Actually, Oh and gosh, I, I just had a big tragedy for this Broadway set last week because we were doing a show called, my friend Erica and I were doing a show called Bosom Buddies where we've been friends since college and we were going to sing our resumes. So she, oh, thanks everybody. Oh, thanks guys. You see what um, they're saying? Yeah, very beautiful from Crystal. Oh. June says, fabulous. Marsha says, wow. Rose Rosemary says, that was wow. So happy. Get to see these incredible performances. Just wow. Linda, wow. Loved it. Juanita, fantastic. Uh, you have such an amazing gift, so much talent as Thanks. well. A beautiful singing, wonderful acting, terrific uh, singing, and you sing it well makes me want more. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh, that's very sweet. That's Welcome so to the Levity Show. <laughs> I had to do a tragedy last week, and I was like, wow, can I still do this? Um, but like my friend Erica played Belle, so she did Belle, and she did Sally Bowles, and I was like, I'm going to do sad guy tragedy. Um, <laughs> That's what it is. But I just sang it like last Friday and I was like, tragedy without fail. Tragedy. I forgot my words. <laughs> without fail, guys. You love comedy too, don't you? There's a comedic uh, bent inside there. 
I think I'm just, I'm, I think I'm just, a, I have a lot of personality. I would not say that I'm awesome at comedy. I think I'm just weird. And I embrace that I'm kind of goofy by nature. Very self-deprecating as well. No, just honest. Just, just, <laughs> just, just, I'm goofy. I, I, I would say that there are comedians, though, that are out there. There are people that definitely excel in reading the room and knowing how to craft something to be wildly funny. And I think I'm just kind of like... You go with whatever's happening. You sort of observe the situation yeah. and roll with it. Exactly. So more comments coming in, DJ, from our lovely oh. audience. A natural. Love the Bee Gees. You did that song perfect. Love your rendition. It's Thank all you. true. Very beautiful. We have another clip here, too. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> it's really long, though. It's epiphany. <laughs> it's your epiphany and your monologue. <laughs> I mean, people are well. Again, I'm not going to say no. They're loving it. They're loving it. You know, it. Alter Boys. Does anybody out there know Alter Boys? Sure. Yeah. It's it's the whole monologue leading into the song Epiphany from Alter Boys, but it's very it's very different from this. Very different. <laughs> well, it shows your versatility and variety, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. You have. I'm sweating so much. Oh, no, no need to be nervous. You're this is fine. what people must feel like on um, like the TV talk shows. They're like, and here's your baby photo of you naked in the bathtub. Like this is. I'm like these shows. DJ, oh. this is your life. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's having an epiphany, along with a monologue. And That's this right. is the same theater actually as Rent. They hired me back after this. Who knows why? I love that freeze frame. It's like you're saying. Are you actually expecting me to do something here? <laughs> and also, um, if anybody's aware of P90X, I had just finished it and my arms are ripped. <laughs> I just, I, that's, that's the thing what... that I took away from this video that I'm probably the best shape I've ever been in my life in this video. You'll also see that I'm wearing my Liza wig in this video and the last. Wow. Wow. <laughs> cool. It's stuff. my hair, but I call it. <laughs> anyway, it's really his hair. <laughs> it is my hair. All right, time for his epiphany and monologue. Enjoy, everybody. <laughs> Put some more ice in that glass. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Here we go. <laughs> I was made to feel odd and freakish by the kids in my neighborhood. Episcopalian thugs, mostly. <laughs> Every Sunday, as I went to church, they would make fun of my walk, or my talk, or my attention to detail. <laughs> you know, oftentimes, they would even tie me up and shave all of the hair off of my body. And I tried to accessorize by wearing a series of smart looking hats, or <laughs> painting my eyebrows back on, or... But, you know... That just kind of fueled them even more. Anyway, this one Sunday, when I was being persecuted with hair, <laughs> this new kid that I've never seen before came out of nowhere. He chased the Episcopalians away, and he dried my tears. I called him my guardian angel. Remember Matthew? <laughs> but he, he said to me that the real angels were up there in heaven, 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 heaven. And that's the day I became interested in space travel. <laughs> but meeting Matthew that day helped me realize something else about myself. Something that I always knew deep down, but never had the courage to admit. So, for the 10 of you out there tonight who are having troubles coming to your own realization, just know that there is nothing to be ashamed of. And you're not alone. Friends don't accept I love what 
my parents reject my love, but you always will me be until you can say. audience was also sp like pretty spectacular so i yeah all, all your family and relatives you invited them <laughs> yes oh no my family's always like mm, mm. Really, <laughs> not my favorite <laughs> They're like, they give me notes not my favorite <laughs> mm, too much vibrato on that one. <laughs> oh no there was this like local company so the theater there is, is this huge like um it's a big theater town, Manchester, New Hampshire, for some reason. And is, they yeah. have a big theater school. And I think that might have been the night that the theater school kids were there. So it was like extra fun. And we were like, oh, yeah. in. there yeah. were so many things done in that video that I didn't typically do in the show. Because I was like, just keep it going because yeah. they're having so much fun. <laughs> Let it roll. 
Well, yeah. Merlin in Ontario, Canada is having fun. Wonderfully sang. Love it. Kathleen in New York. Claps, claps, claps. Mary Bishop says, great performance, DJ. Linda says, that was fun to watch. June, oh. of course, says, bravo. Maureen says, I feel like I was right there in the audience. That was just great. I freaking love you, DJ. <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. I love you, too. <laughs> Thank you. Wowie from uh, Juanita and uh, Crystal claps and hearts as well. And uh, Rosemary, uh, you are just a human exploding with incredible talent, personality, joy, and endless energy. Thank you very much for those comments, Rosemary. Did you want to throw something live into the mix for the audience? Oh, sure. I what mean, what would you like to do? Oh, I was thinking about it and I was like thinking like, uh, I would like to do something fun and lighthearted and maybe uh, something a little um, cheeky. You know, I don't think we need something like tragedy, uh, especially this moment. I have been doing, um, I mean, Rosemary has literally seen everything I've ever done. So Rosemary, I'll, I'll tune to you, but I was thinking about doing my version of Neil Sedaka's Calendar Girl, Rosemary. What do you think yeah. about that? Rosemary, what do you think? Rosemary, you're up. So yeah. I, yeah. I'll see if she thinks it's a good pick or if there's another thing, Rosemary, because Rosemary literally has seen everything I've ever done. See, what's good about medleys is if you forget lyrics, you can go to the next thing <laughs> when it's a medley. Oh, I forgot. I think I'll change the medley now. <laughs> well, actually, so with Calendar Girl, so I've been doing this Neil Sedaka set, and um, I thought when I got to Calendar Girl, it needed to be um, maybe uh, adjusted for 2020 <laughs> because, um, you know, we didn't have a normal year. So I have a very uh, cheeky version of Calendar Girl that is meant to be lighthearted, uh, that I've been doing whenever somebody asks for something because I think it's really fun. So wait, 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 wait. I think I, I think I know what's happening here. I feel it again. Are we, in general terms, having another world premiere exclusive uh, on air? Uh, it's been done a few times. In I this venue with uh, 7 billion people watching all at once internationally? No, no, okay. no. So, it has been done virtually, but not with seven yeah. billion people. Well, well, we'll stick with the seven billion world right. premiere exclusive. <laughs> All right, because, so, because this so stays in the archives too, so people will see it, you know, in perpetuity. Oh well, nice. I think this, this would be fun, and I just love nice. to do it. My dear friend Erica Lustig um, actually wrote it. Um, I haven't done any sort of sound check, so I might need you to uh, just just confirm that sound is is. It's good, good and yeah. vibrant yeah. and all of that. Sure, so far it is, yeah, with the conversations, absolutely. Um, you know, as a singer, I will have to give myself a little bit of reverb here because, you know, it but makes it sound a little but bit better. But of course, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> oh gosh, so that's actually an effect I can do too and I call it my deli counter, wait. Of course, of course, of course. That echo sound, yeah. Number 23, number 23, your roast beef is ready. Number 23. DJ, please report to the front office. DJ, please report to the front office. The principal would like to see you. <laughs> yes, literally. So, uh, okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to start the regular version of Calendar Girl, and you can tell me if the track is all right. Oh, no, no, I want to give away the joke. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's a sounding sound wise. Hello, 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 my calendar girl. Just, uh, the music a little hot. It's a little gonna, hot. Yeah, if you're going to sing over it, you should tamp, it should be go down probably. Yeah, because it'll outdo you. Yeah. Fair, 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 fair. Yeah, have this. Try singing with it. Yeah, sweet calendar girl. That's perfect. All right, so let's do it. All right. Calendar Girl, DJ is up on the Gym Master Show. Here we go. Line. Here we go. You start the year off fine. Too much effect. <laughs> You're on the list, Valentine. March. We're going to march down that. March down that. So like I said before, I felt that um, this could use a rewrite. So um, instead of doing Calendar Girl, here is my version of Calendar Girl. <laughs> Quarantine girl. Quarantine girl. This part stays the same. Each and every day of the year. January. You start the year off fine. February. You're my little Valentine. March. I'm gonna march down that Walgreens aisle. 
paper. Grabbing toilet paper to stockpile. Yeah, yeah. It shut down the world. Still, I love, I love, I love my little quarantine girl six feet away. Every day. Every day. Every day of the year. Every day of the year. <laughs> Maybe we should sleep in separate rooms. June. I'll take you on a dinner date through Zoom. July. Like a Clorox wipe your heart to find. August. Summer ends and we're still quarantined. Yeah, yeah. It shut down the world. Still, I love, I love, I love my little quarantine girl six feet away. Six feet away. With masks in play all through the year. Yeah. All right, so this is the part where I would dance, but I don't really have um, <laughs> much room to dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's shut down the world. Still, I love, I love, I love my little quarantine girl six feet away, six feet away. with masks in play, masks play all through the year. Spend all our time with TV screens. October. We'll wear our masks on Halloween. November. We'll social distance on Thanksgiving Day. December. And hope the next year COVID just goes away. Yeah, yeah. It shut down the world. Still, I love, I love, I live. Quoting girls six feet away. Every day of the year. I love, I love, I love my quarantine girl. I still love her. I love her. There you go. <laughs> that is my version of Calderon. Very cool, my friend. Very cool. And the love you say that. Love you new and old. Kathy Short in Cleveland. That's perfect with claps. Hearts, more claps. Uh, South Africa, Juanita reporting in. Brilliant. Ah. Love it. LOL. Clap, 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 clap. Mm -hmm. uh, Maureen, yeah, baby. <laughs> Rosemary, that's perfect pitch. Ending my day with a smile. Clap, clap, clap. Mary Bishop says, love it. That was great. Kathleen Walker mm -hmm. says, funny with claps. That's perfect from Kathy. Crystal says, love it with claps and hearts. Renee in mm -hmm. Iowa says, LOL. She's loving it. Of course, June says, hysterical. Rosemary says, DJ, what fun. Such a perfect version. LOL. Hearts. Merlin in Canada, clapping. Bravo. Linda in Florida, I so love this. Ha -ha -ha -ha. Oh. She's enjoying it. Mona in Louisiana, uh, funny. Love it. And Linda says, LOL. She's loving it as well. More coming in here. Uh, Austin Field says, this is excellent stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. And that's well, just- thank you. I didn't write it. I didn't write it. My friend Erica did. And of course, we are not making light of a pandemic. Get your vaccine shots if you can. Like, let's all congregate again. But, you know, we needed, when we started to do it, you know, you're doing uh, all of the Neil Sedaka hits like O'Carroll and Breaking Up is Hard to Do and Calendar Girl. I was like, this is a prime opportunity to maybe talk about something that's going on today. So I will say that I once posted that on a Neil Sedaka Facebook fan group, and I got um, yelled at by hundreds and hundreds of people. Really? Uh, not, not, not the lovety love you're getting tonight, huh? Well, uh, uh, it was specifically for Neil Sedaka, so they 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 were a little mad that someone was trying to tail off of him. So uh, I was thinking it was just a fun cover that maybe they'd enjoy, but they were like only Neil fans, and yeah, I I did get some positive. It, for every, so there were like, there's like, uh, like a million people on this Facebook group. So, you know, for every 10,000 com like comments or likes that people liked, I had a hundred people that hated it. That's not for every, yeah, that's a lot of likes and a lot of love. Absolutely. Well, you got nothing but love here on this show. Oh, thank <laughs> you. And thank you for letting me come on and sing a little bit. Oh, you know, I just really enjoy it. And I love that one because I think it's, um, you know, it, this year has been so heavy. So it I think it's maybe, maybe to take it a little bit lighter and uh, have another cocktail. And, you know, as Rosemary and I always talk about, you know, martinis, have a martini and hear some good music and, yeah, Pretend that you have a $15 glass of wine that you bought at the Broadway bar. Cheers. <laughs> Mine looks like, mine's just water. It's water, yeah. I promise. Yeah, this is just Trader Joe's lemonade. Hey. <laughs> but in a fancy glass. Hey, I love it. 
That's I it. love it. So what would you consider your big break? When you were in Boston, did you go straight from Boston to New York? Um, well, it's funny because, you know, uh, it's, it, you know, the first audition I ever, I ever booked was the, or the first ever audition I ever went on in New York City I booked. It was the Jesus Christ Superstar Tour. Um, and I thought all of life is going to be exactly like that. And I actually tell a, a story. Actually, I sing, um, I sing a song from the show. And in between the verses, I'll tell my audition story because I shouldn't have gotten the show in any shape, way, or form. I literally, you know, messed up everything. Everyone was looking like they were on American Idol. I wore a three-piece suit. Then I got called for a dance call, and I didn't have dance clothes, so I danced in my suit. And um, but by you know by it just goes to show that you know in life you don't get to decide everything. There are powers at work, and and things happen for a reason. And um, so I ended up booking the show, and I did it. And for the longest time, I thought that's how New York works. You show up and you book it. And then of course, that's not how New York works. And there were for every one show I would book, there would maybe be a hundred auditions that I would go on. Um, big break wise, I would say that I'm still waiting for it. I think I've done a lot of really cool things, but I do think that, you know, um, I wouldn't take a big, a big project to be thrown my way. I've done, I know, and I've worked with, you know, everyone from Neely to Kathleen Turner and mm, yeah, and that's awesome and great, but I wouldn't say, um, that I wouldn't welcome a big break. If there's what, any is, what is an ultimate role for you? Is it stage? Is it film is it movies um other venues separate from just stage do you have uh, eyes and ears open to all of it within the arts and the creative uh, field eyes and ears and open to all of it um but the thing that i love most i really i i do and you know i always forget it until i'm doing it i love being on that stage and i love being under the yeah. lights and i love the communal feel yeah. of a thousand people in that audience especially when they're on your side and everyone's willing to uncross their arms and to leave their baggage at the door for the next hour hour and a half whatever it is so be it and everyone's just willing to you know just have a good time there's something to be said about um you know just being in that theater with the lights down and oh yeah and everyone has bought a ticket, so they may be, you know, there is there is a world in which people don't buy tickets, cruise ships, so people will get up and they'll walk right out of your show. Yeah. But if you're in a, a theater and everyone has sold tickets, like they've paid 40 bucks, no one's gonna leave, they paid 40 no. bucks. Right. And right. eventually some part of your show will appeal to them and eventually by the end of the show, it feels like you have a thousand new friends and you yeah. meet them at the stage door or at the, the meet and greet after the show. And there's nothing that feels like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that nothing, and you, you go home and you're like, wow, that's, that's why I do it. And it doesn't have to be a huge fancy theater. You know, there, we've had these experiences with an audience of 20 people at a theater in Rochester, New York, that was called the Downstairs Cabaret Theater. And we've had experiences, you know, at Caesars Palace that were like that, or retirement communities. Oh my gosh, they'll show up with a whole bottle of wine and they are ready for your show and they will party and have the best time. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I live and breathe. I love to be on that stage. I, I, but I love performing over, I'll welcome anything. And I love the, the vibe of it all, but that live aspect where I could forget my words, maybe a set piece doesn't come on yeah. uh, in Saturday Night Fever. I used to ride a telephone booth and it would always like, ee, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and I would get like, or once I write, I rode a car on stage in the show too. And once literally the car just like stopped and I got catapulted onto the stage, like basically through the windshield. Here I am. <laughs> Here I am guys. It's during the opening. It's during, um, oh, what is the opening? Um, Oh, I can't remember. I know what you're thinking, yeah. I can't remember, but it's like, there's a, I'm supposed to sing like this tiny little line in the opening number and I'm just like, Brr, and I said, you know what I mean? But I love those moments. I'll never forget going to see Wicked and um, the, the beds didn't track out for the popular scene and they all just like joked. They were all like, come on guys, give us our beds, come on. And, but it was something so special that we got to see ourselves and I didn't care that they were screw ups, but, and it's like, when you see a live singer, I don't really care if someone's cracked or, you know, whatnot. It's just like, you get to be in that communal environment. And that's probably what I miss most. Yeah. Kind of nice, even in this medium and that the more we do it, the more people like you guys out there are, are saying the most beautiful things in these comments. Like, you know, and we see you Merlin and Anne and Linda and Rosemary and Marsha and Christine, and we see you and we're, and we're getting that vibe and it's taken maybe a year to kind of 
for us to all realize that we we crave it and we can do this at least until we can go live again you know for me i think it may have come a little easier only because of the television and the radio background so i'm used to the screens and the cameras and that studio feel mm. uh where people are viewing or people are listening but not necessarily in front of you but they're and watching giving you like live feedback oh they're, they're calling in or they're they're watching you on television they're listening to you on the radio but uh, so i'm sort of it came easy for me to be able to translate they still do all that professional work i still do um you know for all the different venues but turn on the, the lights and the switch and get this show going i think it was a little easier just because of maybe some experience with the technology but also the the whole sort of studio feel which is what this really is more than a stage it's much more of a studio sort of scenario so i was very used to it so it came a little bit easier there's a lot of people who had to learn on the fly what any of this means and how do you do this and what is this about and i got to get lights and i got to do all this and and sound and there audience. is a lot of work to it i mean i'm it takes one show takes the entire day just to put together and to book and and script and not even script but just book and get it all together and the branding and marketing and literally oh, yeah. it's 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 like a full-time job when this is on the side <laughs> but it's like oh, yeah. if you care about it and i agree with you about the communal experiences i'm very communal as well i love when you are uh in a movie theater and everybody's watching the titanic sink and we're all feeling the same feeling at the same time there's something just very enveloping about that um sort of communal experience mm -hmm. so when out on stage or when out you know uh, in the public and you come across people and you get to inspire them and interact with them. It's fantastic. It really, really is. I, um, there's something I did when I emceed a friend's Christmas concert at Carnegie hall. I was the master of ceremonies and I was dressed in the tuxedo and kind of like George Burns is. And, um, I was toying with this line for the longest time. I said, gee, I am so, because I th like to throw in a little levity to soften things and to a bring levity. the ice. Yeah, a levity, levity. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm in a tuxedo. I'm the master of ceremonies. I'm, I'm, and I think Neil Sedaka actually was there that year um, because he was one of the guests. So it was really interesting. I'm standing there backstage <clears throat> And I'm introducing all the artists coming out, uh, you know, the big white doors open, full orchestra, youth choir, mega people coming in and out, music, television, what have you, Broadway. And I wrote all the scripts, I wrote the open, the whole thing. So I'm coming out of the doors. This is about 50% into this really joyous holiday Christmas concert at Carnegie Hall that actually happens every year. and. Um, I said, oh, I'm so dying to say this lined just to see what the reaction would be. Because sometimes I like to throw something out there that throws people off. And then if they get it, they love it. So you throw that fishing line out. And if somebody bites, you reel it in. So I'm in the tuxedo and it's 50% in where I've been coming in and out and introduce, introducing and telling a little story about the next performer. So I said, all right. Oh boy, should I do this? You know, it's Carnegie Hall. There's certain ways and structures and certain things. It's Carnegie Hall. But man, do I want to say this line? I just want to throw it out there. So I said, well, let me uh, deduce. It is a New York audience and they're very responsive to a lot of different things. And um, and they, they react and they don't usually just sit there. They react, which is positive. That's good. It's Christmas, it's holidays. So people are in sort of this jovial spirit. They're enjoying the music and the concert and the performers and everything. So, but then again, it's Carnegie Hall. So, all right, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it. So the doors open and out comes the Master of Ceremonies with the orchestra sitting there, you know, with the violins and the cellos, they're just waiting, they're poised. And uh, the choir in the back's waiting. The artist is waiting and I'm coming out, go to the edge of the uh, stage. And I look around smiling in the tuxedo, dressed to the nines. They've seen me all evening, you know, and this is halfway in. 
And uh, I look at them and I, of course, acknowledge the balcony on the top because a lot of people don't even look at the balcony. And they expect, expected me to just go straight into the next introduction of the next artist. But instead, I said, okay, they're at Carnegie Hall, dressed to the nines. It's a holiday concert. And here we are in New York City at Carnegie Hall. I'm going to say that line. Aren't you glad you decided not to go bowling tonight, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> And oh my God, you went from a silent audience to an uproarious roar of laughter and clapping. They had no, the, the two antithesis of the Carnegie Hall and bowling and putting them together in a way that they had no idea that was going to come out from the master's ceremonies in his tuxedo. And uh, when I said the line, then everybody was laughing. I paused, they were smiling and all of a sudden, just it was even looser. People were just really getting into the rest of the concert and the performance, even though they were before, they were really into it even more. So I introduced the artist, the artist comes out, high fives. I go in the back and I'm, I'm sure you, you know, you've had experiences with Carnegie Hall. You go behind the big white door mm -hmm. and then the crew is there and you know, they're all union and they're serious and everything is like very tight, like a weld oil machine and perfectly done. These guys who usually you don't see a lot of commentary from or even facial expressions are getting up out of chairs, running up to me, high five. Oh, nobody's ever said that here before. Aren't you glad you decided not to go bowling tonight? It was terrific. It was just one of those moments, one of those, you know what, roll the dice, take the shot moments. And it worked. <laughs> um, I have a similar story, but it wasn't something I said. It was somebody, something somebody else said that. And just... they said, come back next year too. That was the plus. Oh. Please come back oh. next year. <laughs> oh my gosh. We had a similar thing. It wasn't at Carnegie Hall. Um, it was in Hawaii. Uh, but uh, so this new guy just joined the show. It was my Carol King show. And we always end the show with the song beautiful. Cause I love how it, it, it resonates. It's like, you want to leave people feeling like good, right? You like take this message with you and the line, we always end the show by saying like, we always like to end the show exactly how the show began with three friends sitting around the piano, singing some really great music. Thank you so much. You've been a great audience. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. And um, my friend Caleb just joined the show. Cause I was like, we had, we needed someone just to fill in. And I was like, you're super handsome and you're super talented. And we have these two uh, gigs in Hawaii where we're going to work like once throughout an entire week. So do you want to come to Hawaii? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, do I need to like say exactly that final line? Cause there's like maybe five lines now in the show. It's like, we're all just bantering. And I was like, I mean, make it, make it yourself, do your own thing. Do your own thing. So, he sits, so we do the whole show and the audience is great and they're super responsive. And he sits down at the piano for our final song and we're all sweating bullets. And it's like, we did it, we did it. We now get a week off in Hawaii. And he is sitting at the piano and he's looking out to the audience and he goes, we like to end the show exactly how the show began with three good friends sitting around the piano and he goes to play the piano and he goes, and since my friends couldn't make it here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite these guys to sing with me. And that was it. And the audience died because we thought it, like, it was just out of nowhere. And he's like, and since my friends couldn't make it here tonight. And but he, his setup was so beautiful. Yeah, and it was so right. funny that the audience just laughed and sang along with us for the whole final number. But it was something so organic and just like, you know, it's it the was, best. yeah, it was just an awesome, awesome moment. Uh, <laughs> so um, what were some of the things you said that you were working on before COVID came and sort of stopped everything? Was Carol King's one of them? Yeah, so we, we're paused there. We're doing as much virtual entertainment as possible. But it's, uh, it's really hard because all three of us live in different places yeah. and you know, it, there are limitations with this virtual sphere, especially when we were a tight kind of like doo y harmony group. Um, there was that. Um, I was also working on a Donna Summer show for uh, a cruise line that was called mm. the Donna's, which would be three women singing Donna Summer music. So that's also kind of waiting for us to get back. But what's cool is that we, now we have two new projects that have happened throughout COVID. So Evan, my friend Evan and myself, he was Jer in Jersey Boys. Um, we're doing that Neil Sadaka, Frankie Valley show. We call that High Notes. So um, we've been doing it here virtually, but um, we're also now like, you know, in talks with, you know, maybe next season doing it live with a band, you know, doing some Neil Sadaka, Frankie Valley near you. Yeah. And, um, 
And also a Broadway show called Bosom Buddies with my friend Erica, which we're also, we've just debuted it last week. And all of a sudden, literally my agents called and they were like, would you ever do this show on the road? Could you do the show on the road? Could you get band charts for this? Yeah. So, you know, it's, what's cool is like some of the things that have happened throughout the pandemic and created during the pandemic has have been some of maybe the best ideas ever. So, you know, we're, we're percolating and uh, still trying to be as creative as we can and trying to be as patient as we can otherwise. That's you know. what you have to do, right? You know, yeah. you just you go along. Here's a cool shot of what we saw earlier. Oh, <laughs> I loved that leather jacket. That leather jacket was made for me. I was just going to say, it's a cool jacket. It was made for me, um, but the blue vet, uh, shirt underneath, like the the V-neck sweater was not, and they had to literally uh, sew up the entire back to fit me. <laughs> but and you can't see the pants but they were like skin tight black bell bottoms and that coat <laughs> after a year run smelled horrible <laughs> oh yeah you mean so there was no you had to just keep wearing it there was no time for it to go to oh yes dry, dry clean or anything but, it still. Cleaned it. but it was just like this like leather coat and oh it just it was not pretty. But I only wore it for that one scene. But it just goes to show how sweaty and gross I am. I'm glad I just announced that to 7 billion people. Absolutely. Um, speaking of all of that, take a look at this shot. DJ in Rent. There I am. That. I, I told you I wasn't yeah. pretty. But that, more importantly, <laughs> next to me, I told you I was very ugly. But um, Angelo was actually next to me. And he was on Superstar with me as well. And so he played my Collins. And um, and he he and I are due for a walk tomorrow, actually. Uh, but he's the one who came over for pasta not too long ago. So he not only was in Superstar with me, but he also did that with me, which is really special. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, there I am. Yeah. There I am, all the way to the right. Yep. Wearing my rags. Um, there's a great story in Superstar. I actually understudied like eight roles. And there was a scene where each of us had to sing one line. It was like, see my tongue, I can hardly talk. See my purse, I'm a poor, poor man. And I could never remember which line I was. So it was always like, see my son. And I always forget. <laughs> And um, I thought I was going to get in trouble once backstage. The stage manager was yelling at me. And then Ted Neely there, if you don't know mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ted Neely was the Jesus in the movie. He's a Grammy award winner, all of that. And he was 67 playing Jesus with us. And so I was getting yelled at by the stage manager backstage for forgetting my lines. Mm -hmm. And Ted Neely came up to me and he was like, well, you're a leper. You're losing your voice. I, it was a choice. It was really good. And so he vouched for me and I didn't get in trouble. Thanks, Ted. Yeah. And look, Ted Neely is spectacular, spectacular in his role. Absolutely. Uh, Rosemary's on fire tonight. <laughs> oh, Rosemary's the best. <laughs> oh, thanks for joining us on the Gym Master Show Live, Rosemary. Hope you'll join us regularly on our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. This is a great shot, and oh. so is this. There I am. That was one of the roles I understudied. I went on only a handful of times, and that photo was actually taken in an arena because we would play arenas all the time, and it was so cold was it that we were in like canada or something like deep in how canada. cold was it oh god <laughs> but it was it was so freezing cold in this arena that we could see our our breath and so during intermission we all started just piling on all of our understudy costumes to mm. warm up because mm. we kind of wore ladies like, tattered robes and stuff so that right. one was so it was so warm it was so nice to wear it was uh but i only ever got to wear it every now and then when i was a priest in one of the scenes ever uh, get to keep any outfits at all or no have to give them i've definitely back. stolen some outfits for sure oh yeah i did secret garden and i had these amazing boots and i acted like i lost them and then i took them and then i've worked at the theater multiple times since and i felt so guilty that i then offered to pay for them and confessed <laughs> i was so guilty world premiere exclusive you heard that first here too <laughs> <laughs> don't don't let me wear anything that you make costume wise because i very well might take it he might uh it might end up in his closet <laughs> yeah they're great boots i still have them june goes it was so cold oh it was so, so that, cold that cold <laughs> Happy I think days. we were in Alberta. Happy days. Yeah. Oh, and that's actually, um, I don't know if you ever guys ever watched The Greasier, the one that I want um, yeah. to show, yeah. but that's Derek Keeling. Oh, he was yeah. cut up and he, he actually um, sadly passed, I think about a I year know. ago. I know. 
so, but Derek was absolutely incredible as, um, as uh, who was his name? Uh, the Fonz. Fonzie. 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 Yeah. I was, and I was Chachi Arcola, and I actually met um, my husband. Scott Bayo. Oh, so uh, I was Scott Bayo. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but I was, yeah, the Scott Tapeo, but I actually met um, my partner and husband playing Chachi. He was Richie Cunningham. Oh, and so yeah. that was almost 10 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. So that show has a very uh, special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. all the, all the sleeveless shirts and always going, wow. You know who, wow. We, um, you know who we had on the show? Uh, some of these people that you're mentioning. We actually had Anson Williams who played Potsy on the show as a guest. Yeah. Uh, just a few weeks ago, he was oh, here. Oh, that's yeah. so cool! And he talked oh. about what it was like working with Gary Marshall and the, you know, uh, all the rest of the gang. Marion Ross as Mrs. C and Tom Bosley and Ron Howard and mm. and Scott Bayo and Erin Moran and uh, Donnie Most and uh, all the rest yeah. of them. But it was like uh, that show has uh, staying power. Well, the show is amazing. The musical is horrendous. It is so terrible. Although Chachi has a great line. If anybody remembers Joni and Joni, I'm assuming we all remember Joni loves Chachi. Um, but uh, there's a line in the musical where I go up to Joni or Chachi goes up to Joni and goes, hey, Joni, it's lady's choice. You're a lady. I'm a choice. <laughs> all those lines were. <laughs> yeah. Again, it was so funny. And he used to, oh, and that's actually Carol's Kings. That's on a cruise ship. That's, that's you know, one of our promo shots when we first started going out on cruise ships. And uh, I love those Navy suits. Yeah. yeah really like nice. Navy suits with like satin lapels. It's like very like 1950s, 60s. I love them. Did you ever meet or work with, uh, they were guests on the show too, and they're actually friends, uh, Michael Longoria, who was in Jersey Boys, and J. Robert Spencer, who was in um, Jersey Boys. I only know of them, but I know Michael's brother, Danny Longoria, went to college with me. Really? Yeah. Small world. Yeah, and actually Danny and I sound, sing, I think similarly, I hope I'm not offending you, Danny, if you ever see this, but Danny, uh, I, I would say he's actually a much better singer than I am. He was always very, I was always kind of in his shadow in college because his voice was so glorious. And um, Michael Longoria's voice is even more glorious. Um, but yeah, oh, that's so funny with Michael Longoria. He's so spectacular. Yeah, 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 really, re absolutely amazing. Well, because he did, he and J. Robert Spencer and some of the other gang had formed the Midtown Men, mm -hmm. which, which was actually a PBS special, too. Um, yeah, they were on the show. Yeah, really cool. You family. know, uh, Sean Wiley from Under the Street Lamp, he was also in a version of uh, Jersey Boys as well. Under the Street Lamp, that group, uh, they've had a lot of public television specials, too, and they're still oh, together. Cool. And he was one of the gang in Jersey Boys, but I think a version of it, maybe Chicago or another I mean, version of it. Definitely, there's. I mean, again, there's like one big family, and it's a true testament to this music that, like, it, it, you don't even need to see like Frankie Valli himself. You just kind of want to see the show, and you want to hear tight harmony, and you want to hear people that are passionate singing it. I mean, it's it's unbelievable the staying power of all of that Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons music. So I was actually in a show called Oh, What a Night, which <laughs> I was never the falsetto guy. I can't really do the falsetto, but I would sing, my eyes adored you. That was my big number. <laughs> Fill in the rest. <laughs> yeah, and I wore a turtleneck. It was actually a mock turtleneck called a dickie, and it was white, and it would just go down to like, it, it was like a collar. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Um, yeah. So we were talking about some of the things that you would like to still do that uh, you'd like to, you know, dip your toes into because you've you've had a great variety of things you've been able to do thus far, right? Would you say? Oh, I've been the most unbelievably blessed, and I've done a little of everything. I always I always have this joke saying I'm not amazing at any one thing, but I'm pretty good at everything, and I'm really good at figuring something out. So if you're like, hey, do you do graphic design? I'll do it. I'll figure it out. And if I don't know how, I'll search on YouTube and I'll learn it. They're like, do you know how to, you know, build a website? I'll figure it out. So I'm kind of like, you know, one of those people that will just figure it out. Um, I can't always guarantee it's going to be amazing, but I'll do it. I'm the yes and, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the things that uh, continue to bring you great joy and blessing in your life to to continue to create for all of us in the glorious way that you do, DJ? Um, well, gosh, there's so many. Um, definitely friends and family and supportive yeah. friends and family. And I want to go back to that safety net 
you know, because uh, especially it doesn't have to be during a pandemic, but especially if you're a creative yeah, artist. Hopefully not, not right? No more yeah, pandemics yeah. for another thousand years. No, gosh, no. Um, but, you know, it's, it sort of is universal. It's like, you know, um, we all have passions and dreams and aspirations and just yeah. knowing that I have uh, friends and family and loved ones that are willing to like let me take chances and they don't make me feel bad about that. And they don't, you know, they support it and, you know, that really means a lot. And I know a lot of you out there said that you all have families like that. And um, cooking, I love cooking. Food makes me incredibly happy. I like I like the feel of it. I like uh, serving it to people. Again, I'm not amazing at it, but I'll try it. Yes, exactly. What's your specialty, the pasta? Mm -hmm. Every every week I make- um, What kind of pasta? I love to make a pappardelle pasta, like a ribbon pasta. And I make mm -hmm. it from scratch. And then I like to pair it with Marcella Hazan's famous marinara, if you've ever had it. Have you ever mm -hmm. had it? Yes. Yeah. It's so simple. For those of you who haven't had it, it's three ingredients. It's just San Marzano tomatoes, uh, butter, and onion, and it simmers for an hour. And you take the onion out, and it is light and fresh, and it's awesome with a ribbon pasta. Hands down, it'll change your life. <laughs> so growing up in Boston, was there a lot of like Sunday pasta day and all of that with the family growing up? Sunday and Wednesday. Wednesday was leftovers. Every Sunday, my dad's pasta is more of a bolognese. It's very heavy and very meat heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but, oh, it's so good. And I could yeah. never replicate it, which is why I follow Marcella Hazan's pasta because I keep trying to do uh, a, a meat sauce and I just don't do it well. So I decided to <laughs> try someone else's. But yeah, my mom makes fresh pasta uh, and my dad makes the sauce and it simmers for hours every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, we usually, we used to do leftovers on Wednesdays. You have a favorite role thus far that you've had an opportunity to uh, participate in? The role of life. <laughs> um, probably Bobby C. I love that role in Saturday Night Fever because I was the first time that I got to like uh, be like not the kitschy funny guy. I got to be like the sad guy and I thought that was a really fun time. And I also got to tour all over Europe, which was really fun. Tour, we got to play in Italy and France and Spain and uh, it was, you know, audiences that just have this cult love of Saturday Night Fever and the Bee Gees. And it was just, it was definitely a very memorable experience. Also a cast of people that I know and love. And I still keep in touch with today. Linda wants to know, why would you take the onions out? <laughs> you take them out and then you serve them on the side if you want. So I always eat them because I'll eat an onion like an apple. So, but you take them out and they're like a, like a side. Mm. But you we don't have to. She says you can. Some people don't eat them, right? Yeah, some people don't like onions, some right? Some people don't want them, but let me tell you, it spices the sauce just perfectly. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's so good. And I, I, I also thought butter was weird in a marinara until I tried it, and it was hands down incredible. Mm. Very, very delicious. You know, I was uh, doing a TV shoot in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I was interviewing this uh, doctor. Um, and she was sort of on the keto diet. So they made coffee for all of us when we took a break on the shoot. And I noticed when they were making this fresh coffee, it was delicious coffee. They took just a very, a little smidgen, just a little, not a clump or a square or a scoop, just ever so little portion of butter and dropped it into the coffee. And what that did, I said, well, butter and coffee. She said, oh, oh, let me tell you what it does. Not only does it make the coffee so much smoother texture wise, uh, it also cuts down the acid. The acidic value is neutralized. So it has this more richer, doesn't get rid of the coffee flavor, which is what you want, but just putting the little butter in, it sort of makes it keto and it, uh, tampers down any acid that would normally be in there and it's so much better for for the person that's drinking it so a little wow. butter in the coffee yeah oh, i mean i love so coffee I'm I, actually doing a coffee um focus group next week because a friend of mine nominated me for it because i love coffee so much i yeah, can yeah i love coffee and pasta that's i could survive if a coffee and pasta now just any coffee or does it have to be specific i what like you black like? coffee i black. like black coffee so no, I, nothing in it really. No, I I'm uh, I love black coffee and right I go through fads. So right now I'm really into French press. Yeah. But for a while I was really into mocha pot, which is like that little Italian thing that you put on the stovetop and it would make espresso and I would put a little bit of hot water in it and make like Americanos. 
That's if I need like an extra jolt in the morning. But as, right now, French press is like my jam. Rosemary goes, butter makes everything better. And Maureen says, yes. And Linda <laughs> says, I don't know. I'll stick with the Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts. Hey, donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dad's obsessed. He gets so mad every time I go to Starbucks. Yeah, well, actually, from where I'm from in Massachusetts, I don't know. I, we have some, I think Maureen, she's from Massachusetts, right? Wait, it's Tim Hortons? Uh, no, it's Honeydew Donuts. Oh, honeydew. Honeydew, honeydew is like another Massachusetts brand. There's only pff, maybe like 30 or 40 throughout the state. But I don't think it's outside of Massachusetts, but I don't know if anybody, there was somebody out there, I think from Massachusetts tonight. I wonder if they know Honeydew yeah. Donuts. Yes, Marsha Lyon, right? Marsha was watching from Massachusetts. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So do you uh, watch what you eat or no? Um, uh, Yes and no. I go through phases. Um, I'm a big good runner. Answer. Yes and no is always a good answer. Yes and um, no. <laughs> the way I look, it's like uh, I go. You work it off. You run. I love and I love the um, I love the whole thirty regimen. I've done that a lot. However, um, I really like legumes. I like mm, like beans yeah, and and yeah, nuts. Yeah. Um, but I just uh, I'm a firm believer in loving. I like to know what I have in ingredients, which is what which actually got me into cooking. I like mm. to know exact if I can't pronounce it and I don't know what it is, I don't want to eat it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm kind of that that way in everything. Um, and but I love like just the whole ingredient thing. So I wouldn't say that I do whole 30 all the time because I'll put like peanuts or, or beans or all that. But I definitely steer clear of everything I can that doesn't have preservatives as much as I can. Because I know a lot of like store-bought meats and stuff like that because I'm not vegetarian. They all have preservatives in them and I'm aware of that. But I just try to do that and I run every day. That's important, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I run what about, five to six miles a day, yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. So... Um, what do you do for uh, getting prepared when you have to do a performance and you have to sing? What are some of the vocal exercises or preparation that you do to get the voice ready and to get yourself ready for a performance? Oh, I, I mean, I have the same cycle for everything. I get so nervous that I sing far too much and too loud for a week. I get really vocally tired. I get incredibly nervous. And then I shut up for two days. And then day of the show, I think I'll never be able to do it. And then I do it just fine. <laughs> That's my cycle um, without fail. I'm always, I'm a crazy cuckoo loon that like gets overhyped and anxious. Um, but usually for the show, um, especially, it depends on the show too. If, if it's a musical, like you can kind of warm up throughout um, with our Carol King tribute. Uh, it's kind of my very first line I sing is in locomotion and I hit A, which is uh, if you're not a singer is very high. So I'm literally singing uh, in Little Eva's octave of locomotion in the very first line I sing. So I need to kind of warm up for that. Um, but I try not to warm up too much because in that show we do, I think 26 songs over 90 minutes. So if you if you sing too much and you warm up too much, your voice is totally dust by you know intermission. So I try to slowly uh, warm up. Oh yeah, Marcia said coconut oil blended in coffee. I've been hearing all about coconut oil and it's Whole30 and a whole ingredient. I love coconut oil. But, um, but at the same time, she also knows honeydew donuts. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see that. So that scratches sure. out the coconut oil blended coffee. <laughs> oh, Marsha, you and me, girl. Honeydew donuts. Next time I come to Massachusetts, we're going. What kind? What kind do you like that are there? Oh, oh, what is it called? They used to have, and it's this is not whole ingredient. It's sugar filled and totally not healthy. But they used to have this like... Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Maybe Marsha, maybe you can help me out with what it's called, but it's half coffee, half hot chocolate. And um, I used to get it all the time, like around the holidays, because I don't really love like whip. I'm not a sweets person, but I yeah. love like an unsweetened hot chocolate. Yes, I've done that. We've made that at home here, the, the coffee with the hot chocolate mix, um, you know, mixing the two together, blending the two together. And <sighs> it's it's delicious. I'm not a super sweet person either. I tend to, my sister is the same way. You know, sometimes you'll ha you'll go through a period where you actually crave sugar for some reason. You want chocolate or you want ice cream or something. But generally, I crave uh, more savory items, salt and savory and more... Uh, of those types of foods, as opposed to the sugary, super sweet frostings and all the rest, savory. I mean, I'll have a second steak before I have dessert, without fail. Right. I would, right. but I, 
But again, I'm also an equal opportunity eater. I'll eat anything put in front of me. I also have no allergies and I have no, um, I'm not picky. But so you're I, Italian. I, what about cannoli? <laughs> I'll don't eat it all. I was going to say, don't you have to just, isn't there a law that you have to? <laughs> oh, sure. That, but however, I prefer like a pizza. Italian cookies. <laughs> uh, but a bit, but a pizza is right up my alley because mm. it's, it's more savory. It's got a crunch to it. It's more, um, it's not like sweet. Yeah. yeah. Oh gosh. This is Four a foodie crowd. Friends. They love food here on our show. It's a oh, definitely I love foodie food. crowd. I'm a big eater. My neighbors always laugh at me because I live on a hill in New York City. I'm on 150th Street, which uh, you everyone always thinks of New York City just being a grid and flat, but I actually live at the top of a hill. And I finish my run as the sprint. And I always am sprinting up and it's usually around like five, 5.30. And that's usually when my neighbors get home and they always see me running up the hill and they're always like, here comes the gazelle. And they're always like, why do you always run so much? And I was like, cause I love to eat. And that's my running story. I, I just like to eat. And if you put it in front of me, I will eat it. <laughs> I very rarely leave anything on a plate. Now, here on the show, we generally have this running thing that has happened. This, it's sort of hilarious what's gone on. There's been times when some of the guests have had to step away. They had to get a drink of water. They had mm. to just quickly excuse themselves, or they went to get something that they wanted to show us. Oh, here's the stuffed animal, or here's the album, or here's the, or, or my, uh, I forgot the headphones, or my laptop, or my phone is dying out. I got to get the charger. So then they leave the empty chair there. So now we have so many guests where they've had to leave on air and we see an empty chair. Now what we're going to do, because the lovety said we should do it, is I'm going to sift through some of these episodes where we see the empty chairs. And then we're going to, I think we're going to do an episode where we just show the chair that the guest was in. And they're going to have to guess which guest was in that chair. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Which means they actually want to see the chair that you're in. All right, we'll do it. All right, I gotta, I'm in a tiny space. Like I said, I'm in Manhattan and uh, I'm covered in wires. You guys don't get to see how the sausage is made for these shows, and but Jim built, knows. You built that brick wall just for our show. It's amazing. Did you lay brick by brick by brick? But it's very fragile. Like I said, I'm not amazing at any one thing, but I'm pretty okay at everything. So I YouTubed it. It's held together with toothpaste. So give me a second. <laughs> also, no. I'm wearing they're shorts. They're talking. I, right, when we came on, yeah. right when we came on, Jim said, they won't know if we're wearing pants. And I went, they don't know if we're wearing pants. Tell them if I'm not. All right, I'm going. I'm going. I'm just my chair. There's I gotta take chair, my pants off. Also, I'm wearing in ears. Perfect. Ooh, here we go. There you go, everybody. You wanted to see his chair. There it is. There's DJ's chair. Like it. It's a cool chair, isn't it? Sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> Are you just hearing me yelling? <laughs> you know, the way, <laughs> because we don't see you, it's as if the chair is talking. It's like the, ch the chair is talking to us. What'd you say to me? Jim here I am from beyond the grave. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. Everybody likes to see the empty chair. It's a fantastic chair. I know you said that that chair is actually, that might be the last time, everybody, you see that chair. Because as good as it looks from right. middle up, he is going to be tossing that chair out soon and getting a new chair, right? Oh, yeah. This chair I've had since I moved to New York City, I'm pretty sure... I found it on the street. Um, oh, look, super chair. Cool it's chair. Here and it looks okay. The back looks all right. Um, it's June says it looks company, comfy. It's not comfy in any shape, way, or form. In fact, the bottom, the springs, it's like an old mattress, are now coming up. And uh, so it's just not comfy, and it's old. And because I'm working so much from home these days, I've literally turned my bedroom into an office. And so I actually have very deep window sills and I've turned it into a desk. So I'm going to get an actual, like, I'm going to get a chair that's more of a desk chair, but won't look like a desk chair. Will it and swivel? It's going to swivel. This one doesn't. And I have hardwood floors and they're just so nicked up. 
So I'm gonna I'm I'm trying to up my office game because uh, so much of this year has been in this apartment. <laughs> so the next time he's back on the show, gang, he's gonna be in a brand new chair that swivels. <laughs> Another world it, premiere exclusive. <laughs> it will swivel. Also, this chair when I bought it, I had completely different furniture, and it doesn't match anything I have now. It's just like an old sad chair that is like a like a uh, just makes me remember when I moved to New York City, full of hope. Yeah. It's well, going to the 6 a.m. cattle calls. Yeah. Well, Juanita in South Africa says, nice chair. Linda says, cool chair. Mary says, cool chair. June, super chair. Looks comfy. I hear you. Two thumbs up from Kathleen in New York City for the chair. <laughs> See? Kathleen, have you ever picked up any furniture on the street? I've done it throughout the entire 13 years I've lived here. If there's something that's good on the street, you do a quick inspection and then you haul it back home. Where do you go to the Upper West Side for that? <laughs> they throw um, up some nice things. <laughs> uh, weirdly, I have another chair that I did find on the street that is unbelievable. And uh, I literally was, I, I didn't even know it was uh, actually, my husband was going to work and he's like, he texted me and he was like, there's a chair on the corner of 148th Street and it's brand new and it's beautiful and it looks incredible. And there's a swarm of people, there's people swarming around it. So come and get the chair. And I was like exhausted. It was probably like seven in the morning. I was like, I'm going to get that chair. So I walk all the way down to like, you know, a couple blocks away. And lo and behold, there was this like, it's teal, but it looks really nice. We have a very gray uh, themed department and the teal is like a really nice pop teal. And it was like the right color and it looked brand new. And there was a sign on it that said, no bed bugs. It's a brand new chair. I'm moving out of the city and I couldn't take this with me. And I, there was a whole group of people, maybe 10 people around it. And I was like, excuse me, excuse me. And I pushed my way through and I picked the chair up and I just started walking and I just took it home. I don't know what gave me like the, the chutzpah, the bravado to just like pick up the chair. But I was like, excuse me, every, excuse me, everybody. And I just picked up the chair and walked. And it's... <laughs> This one is is not a nice chair. This, I think, is a, a chair that I got at Target for like $60 13 years ago. But she's lived a good life. You lived a good life. And I will not miss the springs on my butt every time I sit on it. Sticking up, I know. So this is the final hurrah for that chair, gang. You got a chance to see it. She's been good. It's it's been final, good. Uh, final days. <laughs> she went to war and she did. she did good. You did good, kid. <laughs> when you look at your body of work and everything thus far that's happened to you, has it met or exceeded your expectations thus far, DJ? Wildly exceeded. I never thought I would ever work professionally. I have always knew that I would be um, tenacious and I'm definitely uh, a creative person and I'm definitely someone that will figure it out. But I never, I never thought that I would get some of the opportunities I've had. And um, I'm looking forward to some of the opportunities life will hopefully throw my way because I never expect really anything. Truly, truly. I mean, and I, if, if anything else, I mean, and I always talk about this too, I was cut from my college program. So I didn't even graduate with my degree in acting. They told me I wouldn't work professionally. And so every time I do work professionally, it's like, you know, <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. There's no harm. If harm they feelings. could see me now. No, no, no. There's no harm feelings. I was I was a terrible student, and I didn't respect the institution of learning theater. I didn't respect the craft. I was just like, I sing, and I'll be fine. And I was, I was so full of myself that it was the perfect fire underneath me. And um, I'm really glad it panned out that way. It's taken a long time for me to say that, but... Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah. So again, if at first you fail, please do it again. Try again. I mean, it took two years of trying to book Carol's Kings and then we couldn't, we didn't have enough people to do the show. It had so many bookings and not a single cruise line would take it. And then all of a sudden one did and they were like, great, can we have you unlimited amount of weeks? Wow. So, you well, know, how many like, times on average were you out to sea? We would work between probably 30 and 35 weeks a year out to sea. And then on top of that, I also had a cast in England that had a dozen cruises. Uh, we were working on a dozen cruises. They were on their first when it got uh, cut off. And um, we were, I was talking with a guy in Australia to do a cast there. And then we would do a bunch of land gigs too. So we would do maybe a dozen or so. So in our off weeks, we would then go to like, you know, Cortland Repertory Theater or, you know, Seneca Niagara Casino in Niagara Falls, or you would just start playing other venues. What was the most crazy time you've had on a cruise ship where maybe there was rough weather or what have you? Always rough weather. 
It's always, yeah. It's, You're literally uh, like, the locomotion with me. Da, na, na. Like, it's always, always. No, but my favorite cruise ship experience, because cruise ships don't actually, no one on cruise ships pay you. So, or they don't pay you to see the show. The, the yeah. cruise ship pays you to be there. And uh, it's very fancy. They fly you in from wherever you are. And sometimes it's very glamorous. They fly you to Barcelona. And then you get on the ship and you work one day over two weeks. And they pay you a ton of money. And it's, it's very glamorous. But other times, it's not glamorous. And you get flown to Hawaii overnight. And it was 14 hours. And you get there. And they want you to go that night. And if anybody mm -hmm. out there is a singer... And uh, flying on a plane for 14 hours is not good for the voice. So you show up and you're like, will you still love <laughs> me tomorrow? And um, but that one in particular, I remember because we showed up and they didn't have a piano. And the whole show is it's a guy on center on the stage with a piano. The whole show. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we need a piano. And they were like, they didn't get the memo, huh? Well, I oh, guess not. And they're like, we don't have one. And I was like, well, do you have a keyboard? And they were like, we do, but it doesn't work. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm. Ooh, like, what, they give you a piccolo, piccolo or something? Or? So they gave us this broken patching keyboard, which is meant to play like an organ or something. And uh, one of the guys in cast was like, I'm not playing that. And I was like, you're going to play that. You're going to play that. And um, what we ended up doing is that we just piped in the piano. So we have tracks. And I was like, we're just going to play the tracks. And you're going to mime the piano. And so the whole show, he's like, Liberace. Like completely fake and my and you know and miming, but that's the show. At the end of it, he said, "And I'd like you know." And since my friends couldn't make it here tonight, and the audience loved it, it was probably one of our best shows we ever yeah. had. Yeah, because you, you, know, you had to just also, do it. Yeah, there's also sometimes tough audiences, and uh, you know, there's always a critic. There was once a woman that came up to me after the show and said, "I did not enjoy that," and I said, "Okay." You know, thank you. And then she came to see our secondary show and loved it and bought our CD. And, you know, you, sometimes it's like the smallest, tiniest little things that turn people off. And when you just acknowledge them and you say, okay, I asked her, I was like, why didn't you like it? And she's like, I don't like Carol King. And I went, well, why did you come to a show why called you... Carol King's? Yeah. Uh, but I was like, well, do you like James Taylor? Do you like Joni Mitchell? Do you like uh, the Righteous Brothers? She's like, I love all of those people. I was like, great. If you come to our other show in two nights, time, two nights time, we'll do that. And she did, and she loved it. But, you know, sometimes the criticism, uh, we as artists and, you know. we just the territory, yeah. And we take it as like a mountain. We're like, oh, they hate everything I do, and I'm awful. And really, sometimes the criticism could, could be from your director, like, hey, DJ, I really don't care for that mustard sweater. Could you wear a different sweater? And I wear a different sweater, and all of a sudden, I'm, you know, I'm a star. So, exactly. uh, you know, but right. there's always, you know, every, oh, what is Rosemary saying? Audiences love honesty and fun. Oh, Rosemary's been there sometimes. A guy tried to charge the stage and punch me once. Really? Oh yeah. I wonder if Rosemary, you were there for that one. I can't remember, but um, there was one time in the show we do natural woman, which is weird for guys to sing, of course, but the story is there's a rumor out there saying that natural woman was originally written for Bobby V. And then Carol King was like, no guy is going to sing a song about a woman feeling natural. And she was like, there's this new singer. She's got respect out. She's unbelievable. Her name is Aretha Franklin. She should do Natural Woman. And that's how she came to be singing that song. So we're like, well, tonight, you know, we we want to do it. You know, the song was maybe meant for men to sing. So here we go. And so we sing it and we did it. And this guy gets so mad and he like gets up and he walks out at the back of the theater. And um, I, you know, we think quickly on our feet. And I like to think I'm kind of quick and uh it was the end of the song when he left and he left so abruptly that i went oh it's okay ladies and gentlemen he's got a train to catch and it's it's a cruise ship so everyone's like oh ha, 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 it's so funny he's got a train and he was so angry about it that he turned around and he just like looked at me and then i was like have a great night glad you enjoyed the first 10 minutes of our show if you want to catch the next 30 minutes come back to the later show at nine and uh he then started like walking towards the stage and we had this like very aggressive stage manager named TK who like got in his way and she like <laughs> held him back. And I was like, Oh yeah. But again, you know, some, it was one of those moments where I shouldn't have said anything. And I, and, but again, for, you know, those but of you, it was funny. It was a funny line and it wasn't meant harmfully. It was just, no. you know, responding to the situation and it was funny and it was obvious people could see that it was, 
doing what he was doing. So it does get frustrating. You know, I, don't, I don't know if I would have not said something as well. Just he was in the front row too. I forgot that part. He literally was directly in front of us, got up and started walking up the aisle during the end of the song. So it was like, so in the open, I was like, oh, I was like, have a good night. It's okay, ladies and gentlemen, he's got a train to catch. And I thought it was so funny and a thousand people are laughing, but it must have embarrassed him and it must have made him feel a certain way. But if you're gonna go to a show and you, there's a possibility that you might not stay the whole time, yeah, don't sit in the front row. Right. It's as simple as that, sit in the back. I've done it, I've done it. I'll own it. There are some times where I'm like, you know, I, I can't guarantee I'm really tired tonight. Like, especially yeah. on a cruise ship and you know, the common comedians on and you know, you love him and you know, he's funny. And you're like, but I'm just, I'm ratchet. I'm so tired. I'm just going to stand in the back and catch as much of a set as I can, I can stand before I fall asleep before yeah. I want to go to bed. So you're like, you stand in the back. So, you know, you don't be disrespectful. So don't sit in the front row. If you're going to leave. Exactly. Just sort of. It's like right out the back. Comedians always talk about the person in the front row that's like, Oh, yeah. Don Rickles did that all the time. <laughs> oh, my <gasps> God. <laughs> no. Oh, would he pick on people like in oh, the front row? Don Rickles picked on everybody in every row. <laughs> oh, good. Fair. He would have a big guy that's like a Bruno, and then his wife would be next to him, and he'd go, uh, Sir, is that your wife? Ugh. You know, he would do all that kind of stuff. And there were a couple of times where, Bruno was waiting for him at the at the back of the studio. <laughs> and he said, I'm just having fun. I'm just, you know, it's just laughter. It's just fun. It's levity. You know, you could have said, good thing you didn't actually. Um, he's getting up because he knows this is the time when the collection basket's being passed around. Oh, <laughs> oh that's a good one. Oh, I, so I would, take I would have thought of that. And it would have been like, uh, 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 you know, Take the words back in. <laughs> I mean, the, the things that have happened on cruise ships, because cruise ships are their own wild breed. And uh, the things that, like, literally one time, one time we got a comment, they give these comment cards. And one time we got a comment card being like, so angry, so disappointed. I thought Carol King's here. I got these jokes or something like that. And I was like, first of all, Carol King is a huge celebrity. Yeah. You think she's going to be playing a, a, a cruise ship? Which, I mean, no offense. I love cruise ships, but I don't think Carol King's going to be playing a free show for people on a cruise ship. But again, like it's wild. Sometimes like people just don't always read the like they don't read the, the paperwork bios. the ticket yeah. or the press or the right exactly I yeah know, my favorite is people not knowing it's going to be a carol king show and the title is called carol's kings <laughs> have they know. said has what have they said that they think it is like what's the wackiest one i thought it was going to be blah 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 everyone thinks it's jersey boys because we're both we're all in suits Everyone and and what we say like that's that's the aim of the game. We didn't be another Jersey Boys groups. So we wanted to be something similar yet different. You know, uh, we're not recreating the wheel. We wanted to give a hint, and then they go, "Oh, you should do Jersey Boys. You should do Jersey Boys." And you're like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> but again, it's all out of love. It's like again, it's all like it's like it, um, right. you know that I don't know if you have relatives with it. All of my my great aunts, all my grandmother's sisters, you my friends. And it's like that. It's always out of love. It's always like, oh, you should do Jersey Boys. And you're like, okay, yeah. I feel you. And it's all out of like love and respect. And you know, and everyone's in in ninety nine point nine percent of the time, everyone's like, so perfect and and giving, and the audience yeah. is so communal and great. And there's all, but there's it's that's not a fun story to tell. So we tell the stories of the people that you know get up in the front row, or you know, actually one time in tragedy on that crew on um, Saturday Night Fever. Um, I'm, the bridge of the song is night and day. There's a burning down inside of me and I'm contemplating suicide. And in the audience in the front row, there was a little kid and the kid got up and came and stood next to me. And I was like on stairs into the audience. And then he sat on the stairs and I'm singing burning love with a yearning that won't let me be. And this kid's coming into my lap down. I go and I just can't take it all alone. And I'm holding a kid and you're like, you just go with it. And then I'm like, Okay, and then I go tragedy when you lose control, and I hand the kid back, and I go on with my show. But you just—it's some, you, you know—it's like Kanye getting up with Taylor Swift. You can't—you just deal with it and you move on.
right? <laughs> That's what you have to do, right? I mean, it's just, it's par for the course. And sometimes those are some of the most genuine, authentic and funny moments too, right? Oh gosh, yeah. And I mean, you know, just go with it, go with it, banter. And like, it. That's it. I can do. If there's it's nothing fun. that Jim Masters can do, he's going to talk. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, that's, that's good to have. Fill it, fill it, right, exactly. No dead air allowed, no dead air allowed. Well, you know who enjoyed himself tonight once again? Mr. Burns. Oh, thanks, Mr. Burns. If yeah, I had a star. <laughs> what are some other talents before we go? Do you do magic? Do you juggle? Were there other things that you've done over the years uh, um, that you were, when you were a kid? Do you used to collect this or do this or? No, uh, graphic design. I love graphic design. I do a oh, lot of yeah. graphic design. In fact, a lot during this um, pandemic, uh, I, I started doing graphic design that I have kind of a mission statement of like an artist for artists because I always felt like I was always kind of swindled. Not swindled, but, you know, sometimes $150 an hour is not affordable when you're out of an out-of-work singer. So I started creating logos and branding and helping people. I do editing and lately I've been helping people set up home studios with sound so that they can sing and, you know, do concerts just to kind of keep people afloat. But definitely yeah. a lot of graphic design and uh, all that world. But no, no other talents, I would say, aside from, you know, running and uh, singing. Very says DJ YouTube Don Rickles, Martini and Fun Night. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see him ribbon people. I just want to see him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Done. It is funny. It is funny. And Phyllis Diller. Oh, my God. Another. Oh, one. I love Phyllis Diller. I've definitely gone down that YouTube uh, K-hole yeah. multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Some of the... Uh... <laughs> Some of the old PBS, um, that's, that's, like, that's, that's, uh, that's an interesting way you put that. <laughs> Have you never... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, am I allowed to say those things? And just in case, if you're just joining us now... <laughs> Hello, my name is DJ, and I do not and, enjoy drugs of but, any kind. But Marsha has the best line of the night. I'm glad I didn't go bowling. Oh, <laughs> oh I wish I had like a like a laughter clap track. Yeah. Whenever I do like, like virtual trivia, trivia, because I do like virtual bingo and trivia yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Um, I always have like a I have all these sound effects that I'll be like, da -da 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 -da. like I would <laughs> give her a but um Yeah, Tiffany. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. That is so funny. That is funny. This was cool, my friend. This is two and a half hours we've chatted. I know. And I it I, doesn't feel know. like everybody every guest says that it doesn't feel like it because we I just can't believe everyone stayed. They do. Why did you guys stay? They love it. They love it. <laughs> where, where are they gonna get this anywhere else? Most people you do 20 minutes or a half hour, hour, and they're out. <laughs> so oh my God. Uh, we, we just let it roll. We do it's freestyle warm welcoming conversation yeah. we go whatever direction uh we you know cover all the usual but then we take it into whatever you know authentic uh, ways and i love that you know conversations that aren't necessarily scripted and tell i do that work too but sometimes when you just have a good conversation mix it in with some entertainment levity lovity you have a really good time it feels, cozy. Like, it feels yeah. nice it doesn't feel like two and a half hours, does it? It does no. not feel like two and a half hours. No. Absolutely not. You could have been in Boston quicker. <laughs> oh my gosh, two and a half hours. Where, where could I be? Not... Be upstate. You'd be upstate. Juanita, who's still with us late into the evening, if not tomorrow in South Africa. This was a great show. You're a fantastic DJ. Thanks for sharing your music and stories. Have to scoot. Good night, everyone. Juanita, absolutely, because it's like whatever time there. Um, Never enough time, Tracy says. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Mary says, great meeting you, DJ. Hope to see you live sometime. And everybody watching the YouTube channel for the first time, show it some love. They should subscribe to the our YouTube channel, shouldn't they, my friend? <laughs> yes, go subscribe. So go subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Costs nothing. I don't know why they call it subscribe. There's no fee. We love you. We love you back, June. We love you back. Uh, Rosemary also says the whole world needs to feel your heart and see you hear Aww. your talent it happen. I'll see it happen. Good stuff. You know, when you have people around you that believe in you, whether it's family, friends, colleagues, uh, viewers, listeners, uh, audience members, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Rosemary says, thank you, Jim, for bringing DJ to us. Mm. It was such a wonderful evening. We all needed this. My pleasure. And this is what we do every night. Uh, Rosemary, this is kind of what it's like here on the show. Um, 
this is really beautiful. Mona says, uh, thank you for your time. Great show. Nice to meet you as well. This was terrific, DJ, and we'll definitely have you back. We'll keep the porch light on for you. And I hope the show met whatever expectations that you had and that you certainly enjoyed your time with me as I certainly have with you, my friend. Oh, I had the best time. I had no expectations. I just, I was just so honored to be, you know, a, a part of it all. And thank you for June. June actually introduced us. So I want to say thank you to June. And uh, just Absolutely. thank you to all of you guys out there. My, my loveities. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Yeah, I need a t-shirt. It needs, you... needs to be a mug. Whenever you need some levity, just pop into the Gym Master Show Live. We are here. I've <laughs> been merchandising for a very long time. I can tell you with confidence, get a dark colored t-shirt. It will sell the most. The dark color. Okay. I yes, like because the light colors get dirty and wild colors sell only to a very select audience. Very so niche. You'll, notice, right? you'll, you'll start noticing now that almost everything is a dark charcoal, black, or dark. Yes, blue. yes. So it's really anybody can wear it and be fine and happy and enjoy it, right? That's mm -hmm. cool. I like that. We're going to definitely do that. Cool stuff, my friend. Really nice night. And I toast you. I toast you. I have one sip left. How perfect. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Same here. Hmm. Mm. So what are you going to do next? Are you going to stretch your legs? Are you going to go eat? Did you eat already? I have not, but I was hearing and smelling something delicious cooking in okay. the kitchen. So I'll probably go eat. I'll need to take all of this down. Uh, oh, really? so that, yeah, yeah, my bedroom studio. Because you need to be able to go to bed on the other side of the wall. <laughs> no, no. Literally, it's right here. I mean, it's in the other room. I've got multiple rooms in my huge penthouse here in Manhattan. Uh, you know, you know, I set it up and I take it down. But, you know, it's it's all in good fun. And I get to feel like a like I know what I'm doing. I feel like a stage tech. Exactly. Like sounder yeah. like. May your star continue to shine, DJ, and you're now one of our Gym Master Show loveities, which is awesome. And uh, a lot of people like to binge watch all these episodes on our YouTube channel. So anybody that wants to see this whole episode again, it's on the YouTube channel of Gym Master TV. You'll see the full conversation and guest appearance with DJ being here. My friend, I hope we do get a chance to get together maybe and break bread, yeah. maybe with June and a group of us at some point when we're able to do it. That would be really, really cool. I would love that. I would absolutely love that when we can all congregate. <sighs> we'll either do it uh, in New York or Boston or somewhere on that I-95 corridor. Oh my <laughs> God, yes. Somewhere the I-95 corridor. <laughs> we can just go to like one of the rest stops. It'll be fine. I'll take McDonald's. I love McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> like one of those rest stops on the way to Boston. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I went through Connecticut and Rhode Island. And, yeah. Uh, now th this is, uh, Marsha, you might want to finish this because now inquiring minds want to know, do you <gasps> H? Do you H? Preparation H? Oh, H. Do you H? Hmm. And whatever H is, me too from June and LOL from Linda, what is H? Dude. On the next episode, we will tell you what H is when Marsha tells us what H is. Do you H? <laughs> oh, now I'm nervous. Say, yeah. Uh, do you help maybe with the cooking? Yes, of course, right? You, I you do almost all the cooking, I'll be yeah. honest. But there are nights yeah. when, you know, we do these um these concerts and stuff, and I do events that um he'll do cooking, and he'll definitely treat. Um. Oh, you know McDonald's? Oh, there's something about... The, oh, there's some, there's when a new you're hungry and it's midnight. <laughs> there's something about that that uh, that Big Mac that just like brings back some sort of nostalgia for me. It's a childhood thing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a treat. It's not an every night thing, but in New York, the white little white castles are popular. They're amazing because I love onions, and they have the and they're perfect little burgers. Yes, yes. and Sonic is coming to New York City now. Sonic, yep, that's another yeah, one. Yes. Now. For some reason, those white castles are so appealing after you've been at a gathering and you're starving at two in the morning. It's either the diner or the white castle. I remember that very well in New York. Oh, and you yeah. crave it. You might feel it the next day. <laughs> oh, always. Oh, boy. Those cheeseburgers but are in the moment, though, in the moment, a diner tuna melt is sublime. Nice. But the next day, all the butter on the bread of the tuna melt, if your tuna melt is not making your hands ent entirely greasy and slippery, it's not it's worth not, it. It's not a tuna melt. You've been ripped off. Not a tuna melt. Or a Monte Cristo or something <laughs> like that. Monte Cristo. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I haven't been to any of these places in over a year. I love, no. I mean, yeah. 
Can't I wait. love a diner. I love a diner. We've it's done so takeout. Perfect. I mean, we've taken home stuff, but not really gone in and sat at any restaurants yet. We will, but not yet. Not I yet. haven't even done that. The takeout. Going, every now and then, we'll do a deli, uh, a, de a deli uh, sandwich. Because uh, for those of you out there who've never had it, a New York City deli sandwich for four ninety nine is also mm. a staple. Yeah. Like bacon, egg, and cheese. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. The New York area diners. TikTok diner. Yes, June. You and I, we've been yes. there too. Yes. I they're fine. I hope they're fine. That was a staple. We used to call auditions brunch because we would go to TikTok diner because it's on 34th street, right across from all the audition studios. So we would go at the crack of dawn when we were all non-union and we're 20 years old and we would sign ourselves up for auditions and we'd be number like 450. And you knew they'd get through like maybe 60 an hour. So you had a long time and we would all go to brunch at TikTok Diner and hang out for the day. Yeah. And we would go back and audition. Mm. Brooklyn Diner. There's so many great ones. Um, Linda West said, go out and get a big pizza or sub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sub is what they call it in Massachusetts. In Connecticut, yeah. it's a grinder. In New York, it's a hero. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Um, D'Angelo's Subs. Philadelphia, it's a hoagie, I think. D'Angelo's makes a good tuna sandwich. <laughs> Oh, Marcia says if you're you that? So, so small, small, you have to go outside to change my mind. That's true. I mean, I'll tell you, it's 471 square feet. Um, I, I leapt at it because I and bought I'm sure it. you pay for every inch of that <laughs> in well, New York. Well, I bought it about six years ago uh, because it was affordable. Yeah. And it is very tiny, but I love it. It's filled with a lot of love. Mm -hmm. um, but we try not to have a lot of things because it is kind of like a tiny home. If you watch those tiny home yeah. shows, it is not un unlike that. So, uh, you know, we like to try to set up and take down things and be and treat it as a home as well as a workplace right now. Cool stuff. That's but what it's it pretty is. tiny. It's, it's sometimes literally my family will come and visit and they'll be like, oh, this is really small. <laughs> <laughs> you sleep next to the radiator. <laughs> you sleep in the bathtub. I mean, I'm just happy to have the kitchen. We used yeah. to have a studio. We used to have a studio on 141st Street, and uh, it was very dirty and dingy, like the street area, until Hamilton the musical happened because we were directly across from the Hamilton mansion. So all of a sudden, all the Hamilton red, big red tour buses started coming up to 141st Street. And then we moved up to here on 150th, but it's, God it's definitely... Lin-Manuel Miranda, right? <laughs> oh, and what a nice dude. He's super, super yeah. nice. Have you met him? You know who we've had on? Um, the gang from Freestyle Love Supreme. Oh, They fun. were on a couple of nights ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lin is just a nice, nice, nice guy. He literally, he lives uh, like 180s. He lives in Tudor Village and it's... He's he's deserving of everything he does. He is literally a genius, but on top of it, just also someone to elevate his friends. And he's a nice person. A couple of times I've gotten to work with him. He's just the coolest. Absolutely. Uh, Rosemary says, uh, good night, DJ and Jim. Stay safe and well. Thank you. Oh, yes. Diner in the morning. Absolutely. And Christine, thanks for joining us, Rosemary. I hope you'll join us again here. We're here just about every night, seven days a week. And uh, Christine Clifton says, thanks, DJ, for such terrific entertainment mm -hmm. and Lovity Hall tonight. Had such a, a great career and there's so much more for you, hopefully, sooner than later. You are a fun Lovity. Absolutely. He's a Lovity now on the Gym Master Show Live. And uh, Marsha goes, that's what's important. Love. Absolutely. The real deal. You filled uh, the apartment with love. And we're making June hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Me, so too, time, June. Me too, June. Time, time to go eat that uh, delicious dinner that's waiting for you. And my friend, again, this was terrific. Thanks for all the time and uh, the levity and the entertainment and great conversation, inspiring, which is what we're all about here on the show. You're welcome back anytime. Tell everybody you know about the show and uh, we'll have you back one of these days. It was a real pleasure, DJ. A pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everybody. You too. Take care now. Bye-bye. Two-minute wave. <laughs> <laughs> Two-minute wave while we wait. No, wait. You go first. No, you go you, first. No, you, you go first. You, no, you. No, you. Shh. All right. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Lots of fun. Once again, every day is fun on the Gym Masters Show Live. Want to let you know, tomorrow night, another brilliant performer, Michael Simon Hall, is here tomorrow. 
That's right. That is Friday. Michael Simon Hall is here live on the show. On Sunday, we have a phenomenal author. This is Stephen G. Taibbi. He's going to be checking in from Los Angeles. He wrote this incredible new book. It's very riveting and it's a true story and it involves his health and so much more. It's a really, really cool book. Uh, he's going to be with us on Sunday. This is going to be a great, great show. We're going to love that. You know who's with us on Monday? The one and only Hollywood legendary comedian and actress and singer, Judy Tenuta. Yes, you've seen her on everything, HBO and Johnny Carson. and oh, She is amazing. <clears throat> she is Hollywood royalty when it comes to comedy and more. I spoke to her today. We chatted on the phone today in preparation for the show. She's here Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Then from Days of Our Lives fame, yes, Steve Blackwood is here. 10 years he was on Days of Our Lives. Also many other shows and movies and stage performances. Steve Blackwood, again, uh, known most notably for the 10 years he spent on Days of Our Lives, the soap opera. He is going to be here on Tuesday, and that's going to be really, really something special. So Get ready for that. You're going to thoroughly enjoy that as well. want to let you know as well that um, a week from this Saturday, returning to our show is Raid Nesbitt. Yes, you know her from Celtic Woman, Celtic Heart, that brilliant Irish Celtic violinist. She was in Rocktopia on Broadway, again, known for Celtic Woman, Celtic Heart, and she's a brilliant independent solo performer as well. She was a guest in the summertime, or I would say early summer. She's a dear friend of mine. We know, have known each other for years. We've worked on television specials, on public television and more. She's going to be here a week from this Saturday on the 20th at a special time, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. GMT, which is Ireland, Scotland, and England. So Mernade Nesbitt is going to be back here on the show which is going to be absolutely amazing. Then that same night on Saturday, a week from this Saturday, Sissy Wellman, who starred in The Waltons, is going to be with us. She was also on My Three Sons, countless commercials, over 40 films. She's a Hollywood legend. Uh, she was on The Love Boat. I mean, you name the show, she was on it. Sissy Wellman, uh, notably from the Waltons, is going to be with us a week from this Saturday. And then you know who's going to be with us on Sunday? Not this Sunday, the following Sunday. Anybody remember Rodney Allen Rippey, that fantastic actor that got his start in the Jack in the Box commercials? He was that cute kid in the Jack in the Box commercials for years. He was on an episode of The Odd Couple. He actually played the landlord or the owner of the building that uh, Tony Randall and Jack Klugman uh, lived in, Oscar and Felix, and other shows and movies. And all. He's doing some brilliant things in uh, Hollywood right now. We had an epic conversation a couple of days ago. He's going to be joining us, the one and only Rodney Allen Rippey. He is amazing. He's going to be with us, and he's going to be he's going to be a lot of fun, and countless more guests. Uh, just about every day, we have guests from all fields of endeavor, all walks of life, all different backgrounds. It's really really cool, and of course, uh, we have a very special St. Patrick's Day special celebration we're going to do on Wednesday with the traditional Irish dinner and special musical performances and lots of levity, host, viewer, levity chat, and all kinds of cool surprises coming up this Wednesday on St. Patrick's Day, a special Gym Master Show Live St. Patrick's Day celebration episode. That's going to be at a special time. We're going to do it at 8 p.m., not 7 p.m. That's going to be 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, which will be 5 p.m. Pacific. So uh, come join us for some uh, Irish crack and levity and levity on St. Patrick's Day and then more guests next week as well. But again, coming up uh, tomorrow night, Michael Simon Hall. He's a brilliant actor and more. He's going to be with us tomorrow. Sunday, the award-winning author Stephen G. Taibbi with this really inspirational story. And then on Monday, the one and only Hollywood legendary comedian and actor and singer. She's a hoot. She had me laughing on the phone today. Judy Tenuta is going to be with us. It's going to be amazing. Then from Days of Our Lives and much more, Steve Blackwood is with us on Tuesday of next week. And the list goes on and on. We thank a very special guest, DJ Ruccarelli, for joining us here on the show today. 
looks a little bit like um is it andy sandberg there maybe a little bit from brooklyn nine in that picture looks in that photo it looks a little bit doesn't he Good to see you guys tonight. Every day we do something fun. We have all these kind, all this kind of uh, great entertainment and all kinds of cool things, and whew, we love it. We've been doing this uh, many weeks, over 300 episodes, almost a year now, and we love it. Don't forget to smile and share the smile with everybody. That's the best contagion out there. Don't forget to share the lovity. That's right. We always say that on the show. Don't forget to find your Zen place. Mine is, of course, with loving family and friends and uh, cycling and music and writing and all kinds of cool things. And the ocean, living along the ocean here in the Northeastern United States. Uh, I'm swimming, surfing, boogie boarding it, sailing it, floating in it, walking in it. I love the ocean. That is a Zen place for yours truly. And of course, my work in television and radio and stage uh, over the years. That's another uh, very, very cool Zen place for me on the show. And of course, all the different projects and stations and networks and stages and everywhere else. Love it, love it, love it. Definitely Zen place for me. And there you go. The Gym Master Show Live. Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Daily 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Anybody watching on our YouTube channel now, live or in the archives, we would love it if you subscribe to the channel. It helps the show, helps the channel. There's no charge. And uh, click the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We're going to wrap up, gang. Don't forget, one more thing we do, we always say, don't forget to relax, love one another, breathe from the diaphragm, take time for yourself and love yourself. Not in an egotistical, narcissistic way, but in a way that reminds you that you have value and that uh, you're welcome to the party. And you certainly are here on the Gym Master Show Live. So relax and breathe. All the cast characters here, they say goodnight. George Burns says goodnight. Your hosts and executive producer here, Jim Masters, thanks you for your time this time until next time. Kathy Short in Cleveland says, good night, Jim. It's been a very enjoyable evening. Terrific. You guys say that every night. I love that. That means we're doing something. We are doing something really terrific here. We've created a great community. Yes, we'll be on at 8 on St. Patrick's Day. Not sure if you saw the episode of our series. I know you like some of the Irish artists, Marsha. Chloe Agnew was a guest. Mairead Nesbitt was a guest. Colm Keegan, Emmett O'Hanlon, Ryan Kelly, Keith Harkin, Neil Byrne. Mairead Nesbitt's coming back next weekend. Neil Byrne is coming back in like two weeks. He's, of course, Celtic Thunder. He's coming back on the show as well. We had a brilliant flautist, uh, the multi-talented Sir James Galway and Lady Jean Galway. We have the legendary record producer and musician Phil Coulter on and Roy Buckley and George Hutton and uh, Rebecca Harkin and just on and on and on. Oscar Blue and again, the gang from Celtic Woman, Celtic Thunder and uh, Corner Boy was on and we had the Rum Jacks, a Celtic rock band from Australia and all there and so much more. So uh, you can check all that out in the archives. But Ray Nesbitt is uh, next week and uh, the week after, Neil Byrne. And Maureen says, this evening was an absolute blast. Thank you, Jim. My pleasure. We work very hard behind the scenes to put all these shows together. A lot of work. Uh, it's like a full-time job, um, balancing it with my professional work. But we're loving doing it because you guys are really enjoying it. Keep spreading the word. Get more and more people to come in to our lovely hall here and enjoy all of the uh, cool vibes we send out through the airwaves for all of you. Good night, Maureen in uh, Arizona. And good night, Mr. Levity. Good night, Levity's Linda O'Dell in Florida. You too. Marcia says, good night, Jim. Wonderful evening. He's such a talent, such a joy. Thank you. My pleasure. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, thank you for so much for tonight. Great show. Good night, Jim. And all the lovelies, hugs and love. You too, Mona. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Mary. Bishop, good night, everyone. Take care. You as well. Got your email as well, Mary. Thank you for your email. I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, Allison says, he was great, just like you. Thank you, Allison. Right back at you. I appreciate that so very, very much. And uh, claps from Rosemary Coletti. And I hope you'll become a regular lovely viewer on our show and love our YouTube channel and more. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jim Masters TV, Jim Masters TV. So good stuff, good stuff. And thanks for all these great comments. Have a great night, Jim. Good night all you too as well, Kathleen and everybody here. 
Love seeing all these great comments and all your happy faces. So that's a wrap for this episode. Michael Simon Hall is a brilliant, brilliant performer. Going to be with us tomorrow night. It's going to be an amazing show tomorrow. We thank you very much. Night all from uh, Renee, as well as Christine. Good night, Jim and lovely family. Lots of love here in Lovely Hall every night. See you all tomorrow. It's nice to have each show give us joy and get us to smile. Thank you very much, Christine. That's what it's all about every single day. So we thank DJ. We thank all of you. And we say have a wonderful rest of your day, whatever time it is that you're watching this live or in the archives at Gym Masters TV. All the episodes are there. You can binge watch on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. For all of us here, thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We love all of you and keep spreading the word. Be well. Good night.